Welcome, welcome everybody to Yapdom Hearts, where I yap with Kingdom Hearts content creators about all things Kingdom Hearts. And today, join with me are my special guests, uh, MS Prime. So if you want to go ahead uh -huh. and uh, introduce yourself, tell the uh, the audience all about yourself, and we'll go one by one with everybody. My my name is MNS Prime Twenty One MNS or Prime, whatever have you. Um, been a Kingdom Hearts fan fan for a very long time since I first discovered it a few years after it initially released. Um, but never really got into the series officially until around twenty fifteen, late twenty fifteen. And, you know, history goes from there. Um, I'm also an artist. I love to draw. Um, I'm usually always on Twitter. Most of my friends know. I'm also, my favorite character is Young Xehanort. So that's why, I don't know how, if you look through my Twitter or if um, Risk has something picture related on the thumbnail or whatever, um, you see a little Xehanort on there. You know that I'm a Young Xehanort fan. So um, there's that. You're definitely unique for that. I don't know really too many people that are fans of Young Xehanort. So you no. definitely take that uh, that demographic of the Young Xehanort uh, fandom. Yeah, I think I've seen a lot of people in Japan that are, uh, oh, I wouldn't say a lot, but like, if you look deep enough, you'll find some people into Young Xehanort. But no, they're a very small crowd. Uh, but yeah, so, but our next guest, who else we have here with us, we also have the one and only Swood. So Swood, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, what's up? Uh, I'm the real Swood. Uh, I am chronically online on Twitter, constantly talking about Kingdom Hearts and now Fallout as well. Um, I also occasionally make TikToks. Um, and I'm also the resident Terra apologist. Hashtag Terra did nothing wrong, everybody. <laughs> Bless. Me too. <laughs> um, I, I've been... I go either way with Terra. <laughs> Um, I've been playing Kingdom Hearts since the very first one. I've got a greatest hits copy of Kingdom Hearts 1 on PS2. Um, I, I saw an ad for it on Disney Channel as a kid, and I was immediately hooked. I, uh, and, yeah, like, Nomura got, got his hooks into me when I was real young. <laughs> and I've been with the series ever since. I never saw the commercial for KH1. I saw the, I don't know if you guys remember, but it was on Disney Channel called Disney 411. And they did a thing for Kingdom Hearts 2 before it came out. I remember Heart. that. Yeah. And I was like, watch Disney Channel religiously to see when Kingdom Hearts 3 was <laughs> going to come out. Little did I know, it wasn't going to come out anytime soon. <laughs> but going from there, we still have other guests here. So uh, we also got Oath. Oath in the building. He's hey, there. so excited to be here. Um, I'm Oath.jpg or Oath. Um, long time Kingdom Hearts fan and first time yapper and hey. creator of Kingdom Hearts Sad Edits. Um, yeah, yeah, huge, <laughs> huge Kingdom Hearts Union Cross fan. Um, yes. So I'm so excited to talk about Missing Link because oh, I have yeah. an embarrassingly amount of bookmarks saved to talk about theories and kind of seeing what other people in the beta have been talking about. So I'm excited to chat with all my favorite cage TikTokers. Hey, yeah. Hell yeah. I love Union Cross. Oh, oh my God. I'm so excited for... Okay. Well, I'm not going to say because I want to talk about this when we get more <laughs> into the topic. But oh, we have one more guest and it is Eliza. So go ahead. The floor is yours. Up. <laughs> so yeah. Uh... Eliza, also known as Jelly Lizzie, throughout most of the socials, um, Twitter, if I can understand it, Instagram, I'm trying to get better at, but mostly I am on TikTok, doing a bit of a hodgepodge of a lot of things, but most of my Kingdom Hearts content is relegated to cosplays, including my very favorite character, Axel, hey. my emotional support murder clown. <laughs> and um, real quick, um, so I got... But, um, so I recognized Kingdom Hearts as the combination of both Disney and Final Fantasy um, with the commercials. Um, the ones that I remember distinctly actually are Chain of Memories for Game Boy Advance and Kingdom Hearts 2, primarily because of uh, Utada Hikaru's uh, singing. That's what really got me. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 2 in 2007, been in the trenches of the fan base ever since. Hey. I will like to say for the record that this call has a majority of uh, Axel fans 
between uh, me, Eliza, and Oath. So Axel represent. <laughs> Love of Kelly. my life. <laughs> we're just missing Kelly. Kelly. We're, we're just missing Kelly. She would have oogled all oh my god Axel for the entire two five-hour streams about Axel. She's currently streaming uh, Kingdom Hearts at the moment, right? I think, if I can recall. She's yeah. yeah, I think Chain of Memories. I, I edited it, some of her uh, our Kingdom Hearts videos, and oh my god, oh. I got the one where she met Axel for the, for the first time, and it's just, the whole edit is just half of it, probably more than half of it, of her just like thirsting over Axel, and so I had to um. sit there and just be like, all right, I'm getting every moment that Kelly is just going crazy goo goo guy, goo goo gaga over Axel, and I'm putting it together as like a Kelly simp video. Yeah. I feel like that's every video I see from Kelly on TikTok. Yeah, yeah. I Wait, love it though. Swood, who's who's your who's your uh, your favorite character? Is it Tara? Where'd he go? I'm sorry, I hit the mute button by accident on my mic. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna happen. Did you go into what? darkness? Did you go into I... the, the darkness of Alabama? Where'd you go? No, it was uh, it was it was the master of masters' real name, and he censored himself because, or else, Nomura would get to him. Nomura would send his hit squad after me. <laughs> um, he yeah, has, uh, has a chill up his spine. He he he's already hearing. Um, he already knows who the Master of Masters is. You can ask him about it. Mm -hmm. I don't know much about it. You might Look, we all saw it. Dax's video. Okay, we all oh, know that. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. Jimmy Cricket. I know that too. <laughs> um, but uh, no, my favorite character. I mean, if I had to pick one, it's probably Terra. Mm -hmm. Um, which it's funny because I think I like all the characters that nobody else likes because I like Terra, I like Vexen, I like Lexius. Um. Uh -huh. The characters that nobody else seems to like. But <laughs> I love them. Um, I also love Ventus. Um, oh, yeah, Ventus. Even, yeah, I, I, I... Birth by Sleep used to be my favorite, so, like, Ventus, Terra, Aqua, like, those are probably... They all, honestly, that whole trio is probably in my top three. Yeah, it's I actually like that trio, one. too. It's hard to pick just one, though. Okay, so I'll admit a little bit of a tangent here. I actually mm -hmm. totally forgot I am a TikToker as well. I just don't use it that much. No. I've been there. Well, uh, actually, I've been withholding from making content because I was waiting for a little prop, a prop of sorts to arrive. But I've waited since 2022. Um, but um, the thing is, it was actually finished, but the shipping screwed it up. So the person I asked to make the prop um, has to do it again. So Ooh. I'm trying to, yeah, yeah, uh, I'm not mad at them at all, you know, obviously, you know, because it, I, I blame the shipping, but, um, I, like, they were so kind, and I had to let them know, hey, it's okay, take your time, I want it to look good, um, but once I do get the, the prop here, I damn, um, want to use it for a project, and, uh, um, I just hope that audio I like to use stays where it's at, because I think I can't, every time I try to save that and I go back to see if the audio's there, it's no longer there. So I think I saved the video with the audio, but that's not the point. Um, but yeah, you gotta I'm do that before TikTok is gone forever. I mean, there's always YouTube. I mean, there's always YouTube it's shorts. I, I, can, yeah. I, can always, I can always do that, you know. And I've actually been thinking about, like, just transferring my stuff to YouTube shorts. I mean, I use mostly YouTube anyway, so I might as well just... Uh, Honestly, highly recommend for everybody if uh, once TikTok re reinstates the audios on your on your TikToks, just download everything and then post it everywhere. Because that's what I do. In in the words of Brain from Union Cross, I try to be the virus within the uh, the Kingdom Hearts community, and I just put my shit everywhere. And I'm just like, if you're on Instagram, uh, if you're on uh, YouTube Shorts, then it's like you know you watch Kingdom Hearts content, it's probably there. But yeah, better to save it when you can and spread it around because mm -hmm. who knows tiktok's yeah. probably not going anywhere but it's probably better to be safe than sorry but yeah. on that the on that angle though, what were we saying of the heartbreak though of not having anything backed up and then going on and seeing so much oh. mute <laughs> yeah, it, yeah especially if you're in a scenario where all you did was kind of like use a background song and <laughs> your entire thing is gone that is so disheartening yeah, like, I, I have a video that I was really proud of, it, and my joke was, it's from Encanto. Um, you could probably guess where this is going, because Encanto songs have always been striked. 
Um, so I did a video where I was just like being relieved, like after Kingdom Hearts two, and um, I was just sighing relief. And uh, and, and the, it's just, it's the song we don't talk about Bruno, but it's the part where you know Miguel was like has this funny little walk. Um, it's that part of the song um, that I used for that video, and it's just the organization members just walking the way that that, that fiance to be guy um, was. Um, uh, was dancing to or whatever, uh, mm -hmm. that was muted. So, and that made me very sad. <laughs> I saved the mm -hmm. video a while back at least, but it still sucks that that video in particular just kind of went poof a little bit. At least yeah. the audio did. Well, I think they are, they're renegotiating the contract. So I think everyone's audios is going to be coming back. Cause I think all it does is TikTok just puts a mute on it. It doesn't delete. I don't think they delete your audio. But I think if they lift up the mute off the video, then um, everything should go back to normal. And I've heard that they've worked something out with UMG, so hopefully everyone's content um, yeah. gets restored. Yeah, um, yeah, I forget the exact Twitter account, but it's one that usually reports on pop culture and movies and stuff like that. Um, and I think I shared it in, in the Discord with all of us, mm -hmm. but um, uh, I believe TikTok did reach an agreement with UMG. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy that everybody can get their stuff back. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. if we continue to post on TikTok, then, you know, <laughs> make sure to have all of our saves, all of our videos backed up for uh, for the next uh, scenario that happens. But all right. Yeah. But going from there, let's talk about this gosh darn Disney Plus project. Because ooey, 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 I am so, I have so many thoughts. I have so many thoughts um it's okay so it's probably going to be kingdom hearts one right i don't mm. think there's enough content there for kingdom hearts one so i think that they're going to have to do chain of memories <laughs> and days that's my guess i think a movie might work for cage one the tv show mm -hmm. you'd have to probably do those three my mm -hmm. thing is one do we really need another recap of cage one when we already have chain of memories recoded um, and then all the various, like, uh, Chirithi repeating the events, Melody of Memories going through everything. I kind of feel like at this point, Kingdom Hearts 1 has had enough time in the spotlight. We should do Union Cross, which is why I was excited when I mentioned this before. Because if we got a Union Cross TV show, oh my god, that would be so cool. I love the story of Union Cross. That would be Cross. amazing. Yes, mm -hmm. Union Cross, Dark Road. I know they're not going to do it because Disney's probably too much of a wimp to do it. <laughs> but uh, my other angle, give us, if it's a TV show, give us like episodes dedicated to things that we have not seen. So like uh, the organization's beginnings, the very early days, uh, how Terra and Aqua got to train under Master Ericus. Uh, just, just stuff like that, stuff that we haven't seen yet, which I know Namor is probably going to give to us eventually, but that's mm -hmm. the other angle I want to go in. So that, that's my thought process. Um, I'm also concerned on how they're going to approach the subject matter. Uh, if they do it like the one piece way where they get somebody who knows the source material, all means that's good. If it's just some random person being like, I don't know, Donald Duck's in here, <laughs> figure it out, we'll just do whatever, <laughs> then I would be very concerned. It, it would be, I don't want it to go in the direction of Avatar, uh, first movie Avatar, or like uh, the live action Dragon Ball Z movie. That's what I don't want. Um, but yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll open the floor if anyone else has uh, anything uh, actually, we'll st we'll start with you, Swood, since you were the first one to uh, you showed interest in in uh, talking about this topic. What what are your thoughts uh, on this? And also, if anybody else wants to, you know, chime in in the middle of it too, uh, you know, go feel for, go for it. But yeah, did Swood, you got any thoughts? Yeah. So um, we've had rum we've had rumors and mentions of a possible Disney Plus uh, series or movie since um, I looked this up since back in 2020. Uh, there's an IGN mm -hmm. article from back then. Um, where it says Kingdom Hearts TV show reportedly coming to Disney Plus, uh, but it's been four years, so you know, um, it's part of the course. But like, yeah, but um, I was a film major in college, so like the so I've always so I've thought about like how do you how would you even make Kingdom Hearts as a TV show or as a movie? 
Um, and with the recent video game adaptations being successful, like Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, most recently Fallout, um, and the recent Mario Bros. movie, I mean, it just makes sense. It feels like something that's going to happen eventually. Um, personally, I feel like Kingdom Hearts would work better as a TV show than a movie, um, just because it is so dense, and I would worry how would you actually make that work mm -hmm. um, in the time constraints of a movie without it getting to like Avengers and game levels and how of how long it is. Um, with that being said, I feel like they would probably try to adapt to the first game uh, in, as like a first season for a show or as a movie. Um, and I think there's ways that you can make it work. Um, you could go with the method that Seth Kearsley was trying with his Kingdom Hearts pilot back in the early 2000s. You could also, um, you know, try making it as accurate as possible to that universe, like with the Fallout show, if you've seen that. Um, personally, I don't want another recap of what happened in Kingdom Hearts 1. I feel like, we, like you said, we've gotten it enough. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned uh, a un uh, adapting Union Cross. I personally feel that adapting Dark Road would be a great way to, you know, bring Kingdom Hearts to that medium of television. Uh, I feel like you've got a great cast of characters there. You've got a emotional story. It gives you a lot of background for Xehanort and Ericus, which is really mm -hmm. important to the Kingdom Hearts lore. Um, with it being a mobile game, I feel like a lot of people just kind of skipped it, kind of like how back in the day people were skipping the PSP and DS games. Um, so I feel like that would would allow another avenue for that to be really accessible. And I think, similar to the Fallout show, you need to have somebody at the helm who likes Kingdom Hearts, who understands it, who can drive that ship and make sure that, you know, it is faithful to the source material. Um, but ultimately, I think that a Dark Road television series would be, honestly, the best way to approach that. Okay. Yeah. I'm... Yeah, go for it. Yeah, it's... I feel like a good in between of like a TV and um, a movie would be more of a mini series because mm -hmm. you get like longer form without it going into like movies. Because in my ideal world where I get everything that I want, I just want an, uh, a manga to anime adaptation of a mm. Shiromano's um, yes. and maybe like actually or like you know, Birth by Sleep and Dream Dog Distance, uh, since those didn't get manga adaptations. Um, but yeah, because I feel like how she approached uh, the story, like, captures, like, all of, like, the major highlights without feeling like it's skipping it. Mm -hmm. And plus with how much of Kingdom Hearts now, like, you could probably play a lot more with foreshadowing, like, with how um the One Piece live action series uh, did and rearranged some stuff. Yeah. Yeah, give us um, Maid Roxas. I want live action Maid Roxas stab. <laughs> <laughs> well, and if I can add on to that a little bit... um. I think looking to Shiro Amano, uh, just from a visual standpoint and how you want to, you know, how you want to express Kingdom Hearts visually in this format, you know, ver you know, live action versus animation. I think a 2D animated series in the style of Shiro Amano's artwork would mm -hmm. be beautiful. And I feel like her art, and I feel like Shiro Amano's art style lends itself to it would lend itself to animation as well. Animation is sometimes the best medium to tell stories, and I am tired of elite Hollywood pretending it's not. <laughs> yeah, honestly, yeah. like having having a full on Kingdom Hearts anime would be amazing. I've seen so many like fan um, creations of like a Kingdom Hearts anime. I just know it would do so well, but they're they're leaning to do what live action slash like uh, not. I don't even know. It's I, like, I I'm the assuming the humans are probably be live action, but then, like, the Disney characters are probably going to be animated. I, I think the most recent rumor was that it's going to be a live action anime, animated hybrid. And so I've seen mm. people throwing out, um, maybe it would look like Space Jam, maybe it would look like Roger Rabbit. Um, I would worry that there would be too much of a, there's already enough going on in Kingdom Hearts. I feel like there'd be too much of a cognitive dissonance to have, you know, a Justin Chatwin ask Sora there next to Donald and Goofy mm -hmm. with all the lore. I feel like that'd be just a bit too much personally. Yeah, yeah uh, the parts of the Caribbean world in uh, yeah, Kingdom that's, Hearts 3. That's what Nails I was thinking. Right. Oh, you say Kingdom Hearts 3 or Kingdom Hearts 2? 
Not Kingdom Hearts, but Kingdom Hearts 2. Okay. Oh, God almighty. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to say, if it's done well, Kingdom Hearts 3, <laughs> the Caribbean. If it's done poorly, Kingdom Hearts 2, Port Royal. And it, I don't, <laughs> I don't need that. It just looks like you just copy and pasted Sora and crew just over uh, another world. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because unless, like, you know, like into the spider-verse or like um teenage yeah, mutant ninja turtle that's good animation mm -hmm. yeah or disney's only like just catching up with everybody else on that oh what do you got what what's uh what just, thoughts you have <clears throat> i was just gonna say brisk i didn't even think about like if we got like fun background like for a tv show like where did they find Namine? or yes. like kind of more of a backstory on her and there's so many little things that are kind of missing and it reminds me of in the kingdom hearts manga where they have kind of like the little bits at the end like the little um like riku replica shorts or the shion shorts like there's so much fun stuff that we are missing in the history of it and to put that kind of into a television series would be the coolest thing ever and now it's going to be like stuck in my mind forever <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, also the Kyrie and Axel training arc. I would love yes. to see that as well. <sighs> my that God. is one of my biggest disappointments uh, mm. with Kingdom Hearts is that we never got to see Kyrie and Axel train. I would love to see that. And just these little lore bits that we've never quite got. That's always something that I've wanted in like a side game or something. But if we got that in a uh, television show, I wouldn't mind at all. To have like a nice mm -hmm. little anthology of the little bits of Kingdom Hearts that we've never gotten before. Yeah. Right. And if you think about it, like we've gotten Detective Pikachu, we got the Sonic movie, like Disney has the chance to do something completely different. Mm -hmm. And it would be so cool to see it as like a television series instead of kind of like re summarizing the Kingdom Hearts one and kind of just going through the game in a movie format. I mean we kind of got that with like the H D of three like you know chain of memories recoded do we really need another one of those two mm -hmm. like i think a tv series would be really cool yeah because like even there's even like so much information that i don't even think because like the dark seekers like we're moving into the new saga right and so how much more information are we going to get out of the current like the current story because I, I feel like is missing link supposed to be missing links the last one right within this saga before we move on to the next one uh with the start of kingdom hearts 4 isn't that correct or um, am i misremembering I thought, something i i'm I going to assume so but i i don't think i call heard any concrete information about that I, but i do think i do know missing link actually has ties to what to expect in Kingdom Hearts 4, and I have a feeling we'll go into Missing Link when we get to it, but that's what that's what I heard. Um, but other than that, though, I mean, we haven't heard anything. We haven't heard anything of 4, so I think Missing Link, or let alone heard anything other than Missing Link. So I think mm -hmm. that's the best bet I could think of, that perhaps it's going to be... I just know that Missing Link does have elements that'll tie to KH4, at least... Like, um, again, we'll discuss that later, I assume, but um, mm -hmm. I just know it has some ties to it. The elements, I mean. Yeah. Um, it... oh, what were you saying? Oh, one? I was just going to say, uh, I was under the impression that Missing Link was part of the uh, new Lost Master saga. Um, because back in 2020, um, it was announced that Kingdom Hearts was moving into its quote-unquote second phase. And mm -hmm. I believe that second phase is supposed to be the Lost Master uh, saga, so... I was under the impression that it was supposed to be part of them. It could be like a transitional title. Like it could be in that weird middle area where it's like technically the start, but it's also the end of the last one as well. Um, but yeah, I think huh. probably whatever you new could information. Say it's the link. It's the, yes, it's the link between the two <laughs> sagas. Yay. Oh, it's with the, uh, the big brain wordplay. I do have a tweet saved too that I had bookmarked. I don't have a source for it, but um, I do have it where it says there are 13 main Kingdom Hearts games tied to the Dark Seeker saga. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't know if there's. Oh, then that was Kingdom that Hearts math is hard, you know. It 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 can be. Wait, is that 13 including Missing Link or not including Missing Link? 
I think it's 13 including it, but I do like the idea that it would link to the next kind of phase. I guess it depends if you count back cover as an entry, because technically it's not a game. True. But... So, because I think with back cover, we're at 13, but it would also be fitting because we have the imaginary number connecting the saga from one to the other. So, number 14, good old Xion. <sighs> God, no more in his numbers, I swear. Kingdom Hearts math. <laughs> And, and it's uh it, that could be its own class honestly go to like the kingdom hearts university and just study the uh the intricacies of the nomura math it's like girl the math but seven. yeah it's just seven <laughs> and 13 how many times can you put seven and 13 together um okay so i have a question for each of you and that hmm. is however we get this show or movie what is one scene you want to see regardless of whatever game it is you know if if we get something where it's a project where say they make multiple movies of every game or they do a tv show and they eventually cover every game what is that one scene you just want to see just created in like a new light and have everybody else like experience it so like anybody who hasn't played kingdom hearts if there's a scene you want them to see what is that scene uh we'll start with uh, eliza you can go first if you've got one off the top of your head. If not, we could always jump to somebody else. Uh, honestly, the first thing coming to my head is 358 over two days and Roxas kicking the shit out of Syx. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Scene, and it's a shame that it did not get like a proper like cut scene when they re-released -re that. Right. We were absolutely robbed. Right, right. That uh, I feel like also from days we got to see Roxas in a stick in high definition. I just need that. Yeah. <laughs> Brisk, you can't feel my answer. Come on, oh, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that really your answer? Or do you have one? Uh, I was literally going to say that as a joke. Uh, uh, I do have another one, uh, but I'll tell you when it's my time. Okay. Well, I mean, if you want to go, yeah, go for it. Did you mute yourself? Uh, I'm gonna have to be on mute for a second. Okay. Hold on. okay. <laughs> then uh, we'll go. We'll go to Prime. What? What is your? What is your pick for a scene? And then we'll come back to Swood. Okay. So I'm glad that Swood actually speaking of mentioned how it would be really cool if Dark Road specifically should be animated. Um, so within Dark Road, it's kind of hard to pick because you know there's so many good scenes in there, like. I think it'll be really fun to see. There's a couple of things, a couple scenes in mind that I think will be great. Like, the first scene that pops in my head was actually Xehanort meeting the Master of Masters for the first time. Mm, and yeah. just, I think it'll be really cool how they could do a few little things different. Like, you know, the best part of the Master of Masters when he kind of leans on Xehanort. Um, I think it'd be funny if he like ruffles his hair or pinches his cheek or something. I don't know. I think they could do something really fun with it. Um, but another one I want to see was when they were in Agrabah and the carpet was following the kids. Yes. And I would love how they can direct that, especially like assuming that they're going to bring back Ben Diskin. He can, he knows how to do comedic timing mm -hmm. with his voice acting. And, um, and I think he'll be amazing at it i would and the thing is i never heard a single comedic line where it, it's he's genuinely funny and and i'm not talking about for like because it's weird it's a weird line or anything no i mean zayner was genuinely funny in dark road and i know ben diskin can pull that off he he's a pretty funny guy and i know he can pull off comedic timing mm -hmm. with his voice acting as zaynord and i think that'll be really really fun to see how they can direct that yeah no i definitely need to see that carpet scene that definitely was my like my favorite scene <laughs> going back and rewatching all the dark road cut scenes um, this is the this is the current age of this is a that's a stick of mm -hmm. that particular game that's that's <laughs> what that's the it's a stick scene for me and if they take that out from me um i would be very very unhappy Oh, another scene that would be good. The Balder scene when he's like going through his emotions. Oh my god, that would be so impactful to see. Oh my. Yeah. 
All right, before it's like well, a lot. What was that? Lose it. A lot of people mm-hmm. seem to lose it in the games, and I think any one of those scenes would work. Like especially um, Union Cross when we find out what happened with Strelitzia and Ven has yeah. his fit. Yeah, that would well, be. This is what? why it needs to be Union Cross. This is why there's so many good uh, moments that people just don't know about. Ventus is kind of like. Say, the... Sorry, go ahead, Elf. Oh. No, sorry. I was gonna say the scene at the end where they join with their dream eaters is such like a beautiful, yes. sad scene that so many people may have missed out on. Oh, Union Cross yeah, is um, so slept I, on. I, I swear. I've been thinking about uh, what scene I would choose. My initial one was a scene from Kingdom Hearts One, but as I've been thinking about it, honestly, the uh, the scene from un- from the end of Unchained Key before it became Union Cross. Um, of the actual Keyblade War, yes. and the uh, the player character having to fight the uh, the you know masters of the different unions, and just I feel like the I feel like Union Cross didn't quite hit the scale of what a full Keyblade War could be, just due to being a, a mobile phone game. So I would love to see that in a show and just give it the proper scale mm-hmm. that uh, I felt like they were trying to achieve with that. That would be just awesome. See, this is proof right here. Choice. Yeah, this is proof that Union Cross really needs to be the uh, the choice that they go in. But uh, mm-hmm. uh, I have two, if that's okay. You have two? Yeah, go for it. Two. My first one would be um, recoded the cutscene where um, yes. Sora asks Roxas, "Are you going to go back home?" And he says. I don't know if I have one, but there's a place I'd like to be. Mm. And then when he like goes back to Sora's heart, he talks about the sunset. And I just get so emotional every time I see that. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I was posting clips, uh, you recommended that clip. And I was like, oh my god, oh. I can't believe I haven't posted it already. Like It's such a good <laughs> clip. It is such a good and clip. And then um, the other one is kind of niche, but it's when um, Roxas finds the mansion and the dust come and they say, we have come for you, my liege. Mm. I feel like that could be a really cool one. Yeah, that's another thing that I wish they would uh, explore more. Is why the Dusks sort of address Roxas in that way. Is that ever explained? Did I miss something? Was that in a report? No. I don't think no. it was ever explained, and I'm pretty sure that it only ever happens in Kingdom Hearts 2 at the very beginning, and when Sora visits Twilight Town in Kingdom Hearts 3. Mm-hmm. I think that's the only time we ever hear any of the, uh, you know, en- uh, enemy drone uh nobody speak well because like i know there's correlations um with the nobodies and a lot of the uh organization members because they all have similar themings if i remember correctly a lot of those unique nobodies are based on final fantasy job classes and so Mm -hmm. are the organization members so like you'll have like the sniper uh nobodies with zigbar and the like the reaper ones with marluxia I guess maybe they're implying that Roxas just kind of does or kind of is connections to like the basic just dusks. I guess no, so, has, but it's weird. No, no yeah. he, he actually, I think he has the samurai nobodies. Yeah. I, I do oh, think. Right, right. Okay. Okay. So uh, my, my theory, I think it's just, I think it's just, you know, because the dusks are simply just lowly nobodies and. The organization is basically higher up, so basically they're masters, they're mm-hmm. they're royalty, if you will. Um, so they're just addressing Roxas as their higher up because he's part of the thirteen. That's why I think they call him his liege of sorts. But um, it, it's just somebody just addressing him as a as a superior. I mean, not mm-hmm. compared to Zemnus, of course, but Roxas is still part of the organization. He's still a higher up compared to a dusk. Right, right. No, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's kind of already the dynamic that they kind of have going on in the 358 over two days manga with the Dusks also messing with Roxas from time to time. So, (laughs) yeah, I feel like they're kind of like supposed to be like servants, kind of, sort of. But yeah, it's kind of mostly just up to headcanon at some point. It just Uh... actually, hold up, it just occurred Mm -hmm. to me. I just realized something. If they are to, like, you know how Brisky mentioned how if by any chance, should they ever, like, by some stretch of a miracle, animate every single game somehow, mm-hmm. they need to explain how Rico got Kyrie's Keyblade. Yes. That is yes. a piece of lore that I have wanted to know 
Yeah. So it's hard to see where the Be hell did that Keyblade come because, from? Because, so here's the thing too. If uh, if you guys remember, when Kyrie and Aqua meet in Birth by Sleep, Aqua gets that Keyblade. So mm -hmm. the connections are there. It's just, yeah, where, where in the hell did Riku find it? Unless there's some like extra lore where Riku goes back to like, a hollow bastion or i guess yeah it would be hollow bastion still at the time and then he ends up finding it somewhere um but yeah yeah i want to know that um also this kind of uh deviates actually hold on before i get into this uh prime did you say what your scene is that you would want to see uh uh you did you did ask me what uh, i i did answer what i wanted to see of a scene but i did not answer my thoughts about the animation choice, the 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 confirmation, well, the rumor about the uh, about Kingdom Hearts getting a movie, the live action hybrid, and um, mm -hmm. I did I did not express how I feel about it. So if, if it's okay with you, I yeah, I would like to it. express a little bit. Um, I'm not as um, angry about it. Obviously, I can understand why, but I do. It, it is a little tricky to figure out. It, like it, we're talking, we need to think about in a marketing standpoint. I think Swoop probably has a better view on it than I could. But I, I'm gonna be the weird one. I would not mind having Kingdom Hearts one, just simply because it is a starter. They just need to do something a little different from the game itself. Mm -hmm. Um. However, it's um. I, I'm also gonna be like, if we're gonna go to Delulu Land here, of like what we actually want. Um. I definitely am on board with Union Cross and Dark Road especially getting that treatment of the movie TV adaptation of sorts. Um, now, if, if I were to pick like an animation type as a choice, um, I know everyone mentioned like, you know, I, I am definitely on board with Shiro Amano, but I would also be open to the style similar to Avatar The Last Airbender in Legend of Korra. I think that would be interesting to see because, you know, it is the more... They can lip-sync English pretty well. Um, so I think it would be really cool to replicate that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, just, I, you know, I think it would be really cool, but I... I, But the thing is that, that rumor has always popped up every once in a while. Like, like it feels like a year ago, I could have sworn people are saying there's going to be a movie coming up, and they never mentioned it since. It feels like... Mm -hmm consecutively throughout the years i don't know for who knows how long it's just i'm just now that teacher from from jimmy neutron say this is the extinct time you've been in a row that you've been you said you mentioned about this kingdom hearts animation being rumored to be in the makings or whatever i just like so i'm not so sure uh, but i hear the person that quote unquote confirmed this rumor is kind of sketchy uh, especially when his information is behind a paywall on Patreon that you could pay for. So I'm a little sketchy. I'm sketchy? No. He's a bit sketchy, so I, I, I take that with a grain of salt. Um, but I did hear that some of his information was correct, but again, I wouldn't... I'm just gonna let fate run its course and just see what happens, but um, I'm not entirely on board with this yet. Like, I, I don't... I don't know about you all, but I am definitely not someone with the idea of wanting a live action in general for Kingdom Hearts, unless if you're saying going to a live action world. But again, I. But Square Enix can do that. We've seen that in Kingdom Hearts 3 in Pirates. It looks mm -hmm. like a movie. Let them do it. <laughs> um, so here's my stance make it look like an old school Disney movie. Like bring back that like the Lion King sort of feel to it, that classic like that would be amazing if they were to make it like fully animated, that would be pretty mm. cool. And I yeah. feel like that's how you can make it like the most faithful to the actual to the actual mm -hmm. you know source material from the, the Disney World is to try and match that animation style. I think that honestly would be really cool. Well, it would, would be, be cool, but. Mm -hmm. It would take a very long time for yeah. that, though, because you gotta. We're gonna have to be patient again for more Kingdom Hearts content if we want it to go down that route. But um, I, I am definitely again back to the Delugo Land. We definitely need more of that two D animation back for Kingdom Hearts specifically. Mm -hmm. Um, but people are more on board with Sora having you know because there's more like anime esque style though. 
I could see why people would prefer the Shiro Amano, unless you want to collaborate with Shiro Amano with classic Disney animators. Actually, I could see that happening, because if Once Upon a Studio can mesh up other animators, like with 3D and 2D together, I don't see why you can't have the Shiro Amano style with Disney animation style together in a in a in a movie or a TV mm. show. I think it'd be pretty cool, actually. Uh, that's something I like to say, a, a collab of di between people who do anime and people from Disney to work together. I think that'd be kind of cool. I think it actually kind of would be interesting if, say, like the Destiny Islands and Traverse Town parts were maybe like more live action. But when they travel to the different worlds, they do mimic that similar uh, art style to whatever properties they're they're pulling from. So if they can get the animators from... Um, I don't know if a lot of the animators from like the 90s movies are still like around, but if they could get people to like replicate it, that'd be really cool. Wasn't there something recently that was like that where every time they went to like a new sort of, I can't remember, but I feel like I watched something recently where, where they would hop from like world to world and it would change the art style completely. I think maybe I'm thinking of Spider-Verse yeah. or I'm thinking of something else. But that would I be a cool thing recently. Mm -hmm. Like it's like stop motion Sora in the world that never, uh, not the world that never was, in the Nightmare that'll Before. Be that'll be interesting. Yeah, <laughs> but like stop motion Sora, clay, or not stop motion, clay motion Sora in the world. Ah, I'm doing it again in the Nightmare Before Christmas world, and it was just oh. like it would be so fitting just to have that same mm -hmm. art style. Um, ha have the same team. That worked on that before Christmas mm -hmm. release as much as they could to work on that particular world. Yeah, to... it would probably be super expensive, but if like they had specific edit uh, animators who worked on like, say you're like the Aladdin animators and you're mm -hmm. the um, like the Peter Pan one, and then everyone's working on it at the same time, they probably would have to have the same group of animators work on it because that would probably be so that'd be so expensive to have so many animators working on just one specific episode versus having the same ones work, you know, consecutively throughout the entire series. Um, but I think that would be pretty cool. I'm pretty sure the people that worked on Once Upon a Studio had some veteran um, animators that worked on the films as well mm -hmm. work with um, that particular short. Like, for example, the guy who is responsible for the for animating the genie, who also worked on Moana as that little, little mini Maui little guy. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he's he's still around and he can still probably pull off Genie still if he decides to go on board with this whole multi-project uh, Kingdom Hearts movie or so or show whatever you want to call it. Ooh, yeah, each episode would be different animation styles. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be kind of cool, kind of like Star yeah. Wars Visions. I think that'd be kind of neat. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. and a lot of those animators from the '90s, from the Renaissance era of Disney, a lot of them are still around. Now, not all yeah. of them are still working at Disney, so they would have to try to bring them back in. Mm -hmm. But uh, just uh, the first ones that come to mind, um, I saw a video from Corridor Crew uh, where they brought in a, an old animator from Disney, and he was the guy who animated Mushu in the in Mulan. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe Henry Selleck, who was the one who actually directed Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, I believe he's still out there making movies as well. Uh, I think he had a movie come out on Netflix a year or two ago. Um, so uh, yeah. a lot of these, yeah. So a lot of these old animators are still around. Uh, now I don't know how easily Disney could get them to come back, but mm -hmm. you know that is not entirely outside the realm of possibility. And I think changing art styles uh, when they go to different worlds would be a really cool and unique way to pay tribute to those original films. Mm -hmm. uh, question though you think we're gonna see tarzan if it's a cage one remake no oh, no because disney no. hates us <laughs> no, because, yeah because the, the the copyright for uh tarzan with disney has been not with it for years now so they can't really allow themselves to use tarzan again in the future unless mm -hmm. disney owns tarzan i mean it, aside from what they made obviously but not the actual story itself of Tarzan, yeah. of the original story. I think that's what I'll, I understand, but no, I'll, they won't, unfortunately, I'll, unless they give it back. <laughs> Although, Darkness. If, they, Darkness. If, they, if they aren't able to get Tarzan back and they want to have a jungle world where 
uh, where they find a pe- where they find a gummy ship piece, they could always bring in the Jungle Book. Can yes. we finally get Jungle Book in Kingdom Hearts? We sure. almost mm-hmm. got Jungle Book Please. in uh, Birth by Sleep, and then they Birth scrapped sleep. it. Yeah, it was gonna yeah. be yeah, it was gonna be in Birth by Sleep, and they scrapped it after developing a few environments, and then it was uh, I believe um. Uh, I think this information is correct. It was originally going to be in Kingdom Hearts One, but then they realized we don't need two jungle two jungle levels, so they cut mm-hmm. the jungle book and kept Tarzan. If I'm if I remember correctly, and I would just love to see that. And if and I feel like you could slot that in if you wanted to still have a jungle environment in the TV show. Yeah, I don't think too many people would be too upset if there's like a new world where they're like, well, it was going to be the jungle book. But we can't get Tarzan, so we'll put Jungle Book instead. I'm, I'm, I love the Jungle Book, so I'd be down for that. Mm, bring in Jungle just... Book, and then bring in Red Thirteen. Yes. Oh my god. And that introduce would... him in that, that world. That is an inspired decision right there. I want that now. Please, yeah. some, <laughs> please somebody, 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 tweet Namura. We need this now. Dude, that would be so cool. Yeah, honestly, if they were to go in that direction, I don't think any... I think because the real Kingdom Hearts fans would know. They're like, okay, so, like, they had to do something for Tarzan. That would be such an amazing direction to go in. Mm -hmm. That kind of... Okay. So I have something to that effect. But before we get too far far along, Swood, what was your scene? Because I know you you could answer it right away. I want to get your answer before we get too uh, sidetracked. Yeah, um, I, I did interject briefly and mention that uh, I thought the uh, recreating the uh, Keyblade War from uh, Unchained Key would be oh, an yeah, uh, yeah. amazing scene uh, and properly capturing that scale. Um, I mean, I did have a second scene, which was uh, Sora versus uh, uh, Ansem Possessed Riku um, mm. and Hollow Bastion from Kingdom Hearts 1. Uh, you know, the iconic exchange there. There's no way you're taking Kyrie's heart. Mm-hmm. Um I would just love to see that recreated in a new art style um, and really, you know, hammering home the emotion of that uh, without having to uh, die to Riku five times and then sit through the entire cutscene every single time because the PSP version doesn't have a skip cutscene button. Yeah. So. <laughs> Dude, that'd be so funny if they made a reference to that in that scene where just like he, like the Ansem is just talking and talking and somebody's like, <sighs> Like, I don't know, Jiminy Crack would be like, boy, sure would be nice if I could just skip this dialogue right here. I know that'll never happen, but that would be, like, such a funny, like, inside joke. Um, okay. I, I, yeah. I, feel, I feel like if it was on streaming, you could make a really fun meta joke mm-hmm. like that, but then I feel like you're veering too far into something that isn't quite yeah. game hard if you get too meta like that. Yeah, I, yeah, so I, I, I do remember you do, you did mention uh, that scene. I don't know why I thought it was, like, I remember we we skipped over your answer, and uh, I couldn't remember if we had gone back to you or not. Um, okay, well, perfect. All right, so this is what I was going to mention before. If we're going to, like, change the story up, what are your guys' thoughts on, say, we get to Kingdom Hearts 2? We're at the dark margin. Sora and Riku are there, and Aqua shows up. And then Aqua reunites with Sora and Riku, the door to light opens... And they all three leave together. What are your thoughts on that? If that was the direction they were going to go for something like that. So what do you think of Ansem the Wise in the Realm of Darkness? What, what was that? You cut out in the first part. So we're just abandoning Ansem the Wise in the Realm of Darkness? Yeah, instead? I mean, do we really need <laughs> Ansem the Wise? You know, he's going to get yeah, kidnapped by Ansem there. later on. So yeah, we like, don't, he, he's fine. He doesn't need a friend. He, He's he deserves also... a little bit of humanity. <laughs> I know. He's also kind of the reason Roxas and Shia and the others came back. So, because he is a scientist after all, so somebody has to do it. You know, someone has to get him out, rather begrudgingly or otherwise. He is kind of the reason that Roxas is here. I mean, I'll be yeah. honest. I, when I first played Kingdom Hearts 2, I thought he died, and I was perfectly fine with that. So if he gets abandoned in there, <laughs> and we and we and we get more Aqua. Hey, I think more Aqua is always a good thing. Hell because, yeah! Because like I said one of my favorite characters. <laughs> Ooh, but do we lose Dark Aqua? Oh yeah, can't see we would lose Dark Aqua. <laughs> oh, we'd no, have to. Okay, we'd have to. Re- we'd have to. We'd have to somehow. 
make that happen. Maybe we could we, do like a fragmentary passage, throw that in real quick instead of Z uh, Phantom Aqua. It could be so Phantom I'm gonna get a Dark little, Aqua. So I'm going to get a little fanfic -y here. If we're going to make changes to the story and we're going to bring Aqua back earlier, what's to say that we, what, what's to stop us from basically having Xehanort try to take over Aqua's body in a Dream Drop Distance style situation and that's how we get Dark Aqua. Because I remember in the lead up, we all thought uh, in the lead up to Kingdom Hearts 3, most people thought that she got Norded. So, like, what if we actually mm -hmm. do get a Norded Aqua? Just a thought. Mm -hmm. That would be actually that would actually be a pretty good idea because Xehanort could take advantage of her like her mindset of not being able to like rescue her friends and successfully take over a Keyblade wielder. And then in Kingdom Hearts 3, we could have had to fight Darkwa in order to like save her. A la the same way we did with uh with Terra when he, you know, escaped the Guardian. But then then at that point we wouldn't have Ventus. So it would literally be like a very um I don't know, it would be a very uneven because then they wouldn't have the full numbers. But then again, they could just, they could give like Snow White a keyblade, you know, she's a princess of <laughs> art. I'm sure she could figure it out. It is interesting. It is interesting in like I don't think too many people would be upset if they changed the story around, depending on how they changed the story around, as long as it made sense. Um, but then I guess it would depend if it became canon or not, because then at that point, you're really messing with the whole, like, the timeline. And it's we already already have one. You don't have the multiverse yet in Kingdom Hearts. And this would definitely open up into, like, having multiple timelines. Um, well, and I, that's I, a... I, already on final fantasy 7 post with that <laughs> <laughs> that's what i've been hearing i haven't played it but i've heard that they're they're going in that direction I, i'll be excited if we hear if we get a kingdom Hearts reference in uh the final fantasy 7 remake so it's funny you mentioned how the whole multiverse kind of thing like another thought that came to my mind is that if they are going to do like a movie tv show whatever with kingdom hearts i do think it needs to be separate from the games storyline mm -hmm. yeah like, i agree they, with that. they need to change a few things like you know it doesn't need to be one-to-one -one. um i'm i'm not a purist so i i don't care if they change a few things i think like you said i don't think anyone would complain if there are a few changes assuming that you're not a full purist about it but um i, I think i'm definitely more on board with like you know like even if you make it live action it should be different but it should not be live action. That's the, I speak for everyone. It should not be live action. If I can be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I feel unless... like this is where. Yeah, I feel like this is where like it needs. The, if it goes to live action, it needs like the same love that like the One Piece live action series had, where mm -hmm. it had a lot of nerds with it, and you can kind of understand like why they cut out certain scenes that they did. And it's like, yeah, okay, I get it. it, it yeah, also be... I, I want to chime in and, and just uh, say mm -hmm. that uh, I agree with the uh, idea of actually changing it some. Uh, I feel like if you're going to adapt it, you need to do something to make it worth adapting. And so uh, like, to, so I don't mind if they change it. They could do uh, something similar to what happened with Scott Pilgrim versus the world with that new mm. uh, Netflix series where it starts off similar, but then something happens to change the story and now we, we're going off in a new direction. It's not replacing mm -hmm. it, but it's doing something different. And I think that we could honestly have some really great storytelling come out of that mayhaps like a what if situation where riku actually gets the keyblade in the first place mm. that would be really oh, cool honestly. i was I'd gonna love to see say how the... that yeah that'd be really cool that would be that like cool. i always think about like what if like the scene where um in chain of memories where riku thinks it's Sora that's like angry with him and telling him like you know you destroyed the islands like what if he did actually get really mad at Riku and See, he saw some of like mm -hmm. his um like his darkness come out? Kind of reminds me of a, uh, I suppose technically like a hardcover book I bought. Um, have you guys heard of an artist named Holly Polly by any chance? No, I have not, not my head. Tell. No. Okay, so Holly Polly, if like if you by chance want to look up Twitter or something, Holly Polly, if you look at her art style, it looks almost identical to Namor's art oh, style. Oh, no, I know who you're talking about. I've seen their art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and um, she um, also made basically a fan fiction. She, ma she made her own 
what if book, if you will, um, she is she ships Sora and Kyrie. I want to point that out, but she did implement the idea of what if Kyrie was more involved in the plot than mm. her being having her heart taken oh. out throughout mm. the story up until the end. She was actually directly in her story involved in the adventure and. Dora and Kyrie's relationship is a like, it's adorable. Like I I have the book with the it's like, it's super cute. I follow her on Patreon. Um, she does like allows, but I'll, I'll I'm going on a tangent here. But um, the I I think if they are gonna do something like that, I think it would be really cool. But the book already exists. Uh, I don't I don't need the show. I got a book. Mm -hmm. Um, it just the idea of Kyrie being more involved in the plot instead of her not being there. Like, I understand the direction why she was not there. I, I think it's a really good twist, but I do... I, I think... But I have already seen complaints time and time again that Kyrie needs to do something, and she has shown, like, both her strengths and weaknesses in the fanfiction. Um, and I think it'll be really cool for them to implement that should they decide to give the direction of Kyrie having more relevance physically in the plot. I mean, I'm not Ooh, against more Chris, Kyrie screen I, time. Uh, oh, is that yeah, yeah, I mean, Go ahead. I totally want to see the or hear the conversation that Riku and Kyrie had, where he had to bring him to bring her to the mysterious tower. Oh, when he yeah. um, yeah. Oh my God, there's so many. Because even uh, when you were saying like there could be so many like variations, it started getting me thinking of like, oh, I would. A what if definitely needs to happen. I feel like a what if version of Kingdom Hearts is like something that if this first attempt does well, they could do um, like later on when more people are like more aware of what Kingdom Hearts is. I feel like a lot of people know what Kingdom Hearts is, but there's obviously the bigger population that probably has no idea. Um, but Sooth, what were you uh, saying before? Oh, um, what? Oh, Kim. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna jump in and say that I would love to see more Kyrie uh, doing stuff because um, I feel like oftentimes she, honestly, kind of feels like a little bit of an afterthought, and I would love to actually see her be a more active participant in in the story. Yeah. Just think no. of Kelly's video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I I personally feel like Kyrie's gonna get her time to shine, but I I wouldn't be against more opportunities to see her be because she was in the uh in the original like disney channel cartoon was more of a badass um from what she, we saw she kicked, she kicked a heartless in the face it yeah. was fun yes. uh, but, but yeah no i i feel like my head is just i'm going through all like the different possibilities of like a a, a, a version of kingdom hearts where Sora falls to darkness and the main, the first game is Riku and he's going on an adventure uh, with, I don't even know if it would be, I think it would be funny if it was Maleficent and Pete, but they're actually trying to save the world. But Maleficent obviously has like her own uh, purposes for it. Oh, that would be like mm -hmm. such a weird dynamic to it. Uh, mm -hmm. The Vegeta situation. Yeah. It would <laughs> I mean, Maleficent does, at certain points, kind of, like, waver between being, like, the really mean lady to the sort of, like, kind of nice mom that's a little scary, especially at, like, the end of Kingdom Hearts 2, where she's, like, t allowing to, like, her and Pete fight off the, the horde of, like, uh, enemies to let Sora and crew go on ahead. Um, I did have... What was it? I had a thought and I kind of lost it. Oh, I, so Kingdom Hearts <laughs> introduced voice acting to the Final Fantasy characters. How perfect would it be for Kingdom Hearts to be the first time that Final Fantasy characters are going to get a live action um, representation? It's like they can't even <laughs> they can't even do it in their own like. There's no live action Final Fantasy VII because I mean we got Advent Children as a movie. But like, how perfect would it be to see like live action Cloud and Yuffie and Leon in a Kingdom Hearts series? Like that's just like <laughs> you want it. Well, it's Kingdom Hearts. That would that be would kind of help. to think about that. Be, uh, it would it would be interesting. <laughs> I, um, I, I would. I, 
I can. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll let you go. Okay, so I was thinking, uh, if they are going to do something like that, they need to replicate the the guy in the Sora costume. I want him in Kingdom Hearts. That's <laughs> yeah. that's all. That's, we need him. We we when the world need when the world um needed him most, he needs to be there. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, he um, but I want a Cloud character to kind of replicate that the big, the big long hair and the big large sword. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I th if they're gonna do like a proper live action Final Fantasy, let them do a proper live action Final Fantasy and original first. But it would be pretty funny to see. Well, no, technically, have you guys seen that funny skit? Like some, I don't know if it was at an awards show or not, but there was like it was a stage of sorts, and there's this kid, um, like they replicated like the game or oh, I let me see if I could find it. That I know it was on stage, and Sephiroth was on stage any yeah, killed Sora I'm, on stage I know what you're was, talking about yeah it was like some like I don't know if it was uh like a talk show I remember it was really weird because they were going over the events of the story and then all of a sudden like Sephiroth shows up as if he's like and, you know a, a relevant like villain and they're not even mentioning and I don't think actually I think they do bring Ansem in there later on but. yeah Ansem An Ansem was there and he Sora got him, and then Sephiroth mm -hmm. was there, and he got Sora. Uh, mm -hmm. So technically, that's the first live-action Sephiroth I've seen. This is the closest live-action Final Fantasy I think I've seen by far. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about commercials. I mean on stage. So it'll be a matter of time until um, um, we see. Are we, um, I think you might be talking about... Uh, the Kingdom of Hearts uh, performance that was at GeForce 2003 Game Awards. Oh, uh, uh, okay. I, I kind of figured it's something to do with awards. I wasn't so yeah. sure what uh, it I was, can, though. Yeah, I can link that in the uh, in the uh, text chat. Um, but uh, oh, if, I, if I can interject a little bit uh, back to the topic of live act of first live action uh, portrayals of Final Fantasy characters, I'd love that for Kingdom Hearts if it, if they did that. But only if we can get Lance Bass back as Sephiroth. <laughs> yes, I one hundred percent agree with that. Okay, wait. Going on that same thought, what if they got Billy Zane back? Oh my uh, yes, uh, I, I would miss, lose my I mind. Miss for it. Him. I would. I, I would him. implode. That, that would, would be, be amazing. That would be so crazy. He he's he's gone from the series, and they're like, "Hey, we're doing a movie. Do you think you could come back?" Oh my god, that'd be so cool. Man, I, I miss Billy Zane. I miss him. <laughs> I'll do. Uh, uh, not no. that Richard Epstein was bad or anything, yeah. but like, not, not not even close. But hey, I thought hey, he was great in Kingdom Hearts 2. Well, mm -hmm. as Rick Ransom, for that matter. But then Chain of Memories happened, I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> uh, but after a while, I kind of warmed up to it. But nothing compares to Billy Zane. It just, yeah. there's something about it. It's like, this game was so good. <laughs> I feel like Billy Zane really hammed it up and, and, and really, you know, put a lot of, put a lot of emotion into it. Um, whereas I feel Richard Epcar is a bit more reserved in his portrayal as Ansem. And so I think it would be really neat to see Billy, Billy Zane give it another shot as that character. Mm -hmm. Not well, that I dislike it... Richard Epcar because I do, I like him a lot in the role. But yeah, it would be really cool to see Billy Zane back. Uh, I think he's between between a little over the top or a little too reserved. Uh, Chain of Memory certainly was one I thought was a little too over the top for my liking, and I initially didn't like it because, like, after hearing Kim Arts two, because that was my first time hearing Richard Epcar, um, for um, at least for one of his roles, um, growing up, that's the first I've heard of him. Um, and then I heard Chain of Memories, and I'm like, it threw me off guard. I actually initially didn't like it, but again, I warmed up to it. But again, mm -hmm. Billy Zane, man, I, I miss him. <laughs> I, I guess another question is, <laughs> are they going to let Haley Joel Osment voice Sora? If Because uh, it seems like he's got to be the voice of Sora. And if not, are they going to go with the deeper voice Sora? to match the rest of it as to not be off with Chain of Memories. I would assume whatever the whoever actor they get to voice Sora will probably be like a younger kid and they'll probably keep up with it even in Chain of Memories when his voice gets deeper. Or unless they decide to make him a teenager in that, 
that'd be an interesting dynamic if they're like <laughs> for the sake of continuity his voice is going to be high in the first game and then we got to make it deeper in the second game well you got to keep in Everybody... mind that we got to have a game have the series be different from the original kingdom hearts so mm -hmm. i say halo joe osmond should stick with the games while another kid can stick with um the movie slash TV series slash mini series. I feel mm -hmm. it's a good way to differentiate. Mm -hmm. By the way, uh, Izzy, I'm uh, I'm sorry I interrupt you. You could continue. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I just like made a comment of just like about um Sora's voice change from Kingdom Hearts One to Chain of Memories, <laughs> just like <laughs> bless. So I was having a talk about this with um some of the folks in uh, Dax's uh, server about this and just being like, hey, if ducks can walk and talk in this world, uh, puberty can work however you want. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, even if we don't have Haley Joel Osment playing Sora in a movie or show, I think it would be awesome to, at the very least, try to bring him in as, mm -hmm. you know, for a cameo or something. But yeah. I'm totally yeah. open to somebody else playing the character if we're going to go with a different interpretation of it. Mm -hmm. Venetus, at least. Well, no. Unless the kid grows up and has that lower voice, but I think Halo Jossman would be great and still continue as Venetus, because it, it's kind of interchangeable. Changeable on that mm -hmm. one. Yeah, I'm curious to see who they're gonna who they're gonna cast for a lot of these characters. Mm -hmm. That could be, like, its own, like, theory video. It's, like, something you have to do, like, mm -hmm. so much research into and see, like, who would be the best for the role. But then again... You never really know. Uh, oh, okay, oh, hold on. Obviously, Tom, I forgot Tom Holland. Yes, Tom yeah. Holland yeah. is Sora, Donald, <laughs> and Goofy, and Chris Pratt is going to be Zayn <laughs> Nort. How <laughs> can I forget? Dwayne the Rock Johnson is Anson the Wise. No, he's Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> That's true. Oh, dude, that'd be great. Who do we have, John? Huh? You said John Cena. What do you think, Jack? Like, you were cutting out one more time? You cut out a little bit. Yeah, you cut out. Check. check. Mm -hmm. Who do you think uh, Jack Black could play? Jack, oh, oh Jack, my God. Jack Black is clearly going to be Mickey Mouse. Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yes. I get, I, I, that would be great. That would be great. That would be awesome. I love Jack Black. Yeah. I, I would not. I would, I would watch an entire Kingdom Hearts live action of just Jack Black playing all the characters. Ooh. No, even yes. better. Jack, Jack, Jack Black as Demix. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Jack oh, my Black as Demix with a musical number? I'm all about it. <laughs> oh can Demix just have a water do clone? A music number. He needs to do a music number. Dude, water clone? But it's Jack Black as, like, a water version of Demix. And the song is called Water. Water, 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 <laughs> water, 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 water. I don't know. That'll be fun. I can hear it in his voice, and I think that's genius. I think we're cooking on something here. Yeah, dude, they gotta I hire mean, us. Like, we gotta be on that set. Otherwise, I'd pick David Bowie, but he's not here now, so mm. uh, Jack Black will do. Dude, the, the concept Black. of just seeing Jack Black in the in the Kingdom Hearts, I just, I if he doesn't show up in the movie, I hope they give him a character in a future title, potentially missing Link. Ooh, segue, segue. <laughs> oh. oh. Um, but yeah, so I, I think we've I think we've pretty much covered the base enough on the TV series. I think most of us want to see Union Cross. Um, we're down to any changes as long as they're good. If it's an anime, definitely the manga style. I agree with all of our opinions. You guys all have great opinions. Get the brisk stamp of approval. But now the other part of this conversation, missing link. We got the new wave of information. And Oath Fine, said okay. that Oath, uh, you had a bunch of uh, book things bookmarked. So, so later oh on, us, so many. What do you got? What do you got for us? Oh, I don't even know where to start. I think I'll start with Nept. I liked mm. seeing um, this new character, but I also liked seeing in the ways they related to Aqua. It yeah. looked yeah, like there fine. were some cut scenes, um, where like. Nept was looking up at the stars, kind of like mirroring the cutscene with Aqua and Ventus when they were at the Mysterious Tower. The blue hair is an obvious giveaway as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then one that has been 
kind of boggling my mind. Um, Bio has a bunch of amazing tweets about the astral dimension and the layering effect. So there's kind of the conversation of, was that the quadratum that we really visited in the battle between Sora and Yuzora? Or was it the astral dimension? So technically we haven't really been to quadratum. Yeah, I, 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 I think I know what you're talking about. I think I've seen that already. I, mm -hmm. I kind of yeah. blew my mind. I'm like, holy cow. Oh, there's still so much we don't know. That's just so I exciting know. about this about this new arc. Like, with Kingdom Hearts 3, we, were, we already have this idea just based on the elements we are given, like the games we are given. We're getting an idea of what to expect in Kingdom Hearts 3. We don't know what to expect to Kingdom, or we don't know what to expect for Kingdom Hearts 4. Mm -hmm. And... We're practically in the dark, literally. <laughs> so it's um, it's very exciting to see. And, and again, I also mentioned earlier that Missing Link, I heard, is confirmed to to actually have information that will tie with what to expect in Kingdom Hearts Four. And and I think that astral projection is one of them. Can and I think they mentioned. Oh, go on. Like, go on. Yeah. So like um, that portal where the Heartless came out in, in that cutscene in Missing Link, um, on Remus and the player, um, that, I, someone theorized that same portal happened in Quadratum in the Kingdom Hearts 4 trailer, when the Dark Side came out of that, um, little thing. Mm. So, that's just a theory, of course, but it's, uh, um, it is intriguing. It, it, it is too close for comfort at the moment, since we literally have, this is like our, Bits of, this is our bread. We're eating this bread. This is all we got. <laughs> the crumbs. You know? <laughs> crumbs. Uh, morsel. I was going to say, though, there was that there was a line in um, that fight with Yuzora that always interested me, which was why do you look like Sora? Which implies mm -hmm. that it's like Yuzora or whoever might be taking on the appearance of Yuzora knows who Sora is as because, I mean, who knows, in, like, the real Quadratum, maybe the concept of, like, a video game called Kingdom Hearts exists, and whatever astral plane the person um, putting on the persona of Yuzora is being is also, like, confused. It's like, how is Sora here? Like, what's what's Sora doing here as, like, a character in this, like, realm or something? Um, that was always something that was, like, food for thought. Um, I don't really have much to go off of it. That was always just something where I'm like, I wonder what more they're going to do with that, you know, if uh, if the Yozora we met was actually Yozora or not, but... Yeah. I um, uh, could have, sorry, I could have sworn I've heard, uh, like, there was a theory surrounding this, like, potentially the person that asked Yozora, assuming that it is, like, Yozora, um, is wondering, I, I kind of wonder... If the person that talked to Yazora saying, you know, um, the person that told him to save Sora, uh, I think I could be wrong. I, I must have misread it, but it could be, um, there's like many theories of like who it could be. Like it could be the Master of Masters and uh, another that, that just popped in my head. I don't, I, you know, take this with a grain of salt. Don't take it that seriously. But I think it could be darkness that could take form mm. as a Sora, like, um, and then maybe that is one of the the one of the stronger darknesses in um one of the seven darknesses in Union Cross. But again, I don't know because I no that can't be because the seven are trapped in the, the four, uh, four towers. towers. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but it could be like a darkness manifested the same way that happened with Balder, but with someone else. I really don't mm -hmm. know. But maybe. I don't know, but I could see that. But I, I could have sworn I someone I saw a theory relating that it could be darkness imposing as a Sora, but I don't know if it's I, I don't I don't know. It's just something I've heard once somewhere. But again, take that with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of going back, I I just wanted to uh chime in Go for going it. back to um to the concept of the astral plane and the heartless entering through portals um i feel like we've kind of seen um in, in regards to sort of an astral projection and people appearing to be different from how they actually are i'm wondering if the whole you and the whole like 
a person looking different. I wonder if that ha- that sort of astral projection and that sort of astral realm uh, was utilized by Sora maybe inadvertently in uh, Melody of Memory uh, when he kind of took over Kyrie's uh, Kyrie and she ended up looking like Sora and he was fighting Xehanort. I wonder if that was him kind of tapping into that astral plane in a way. Uh, I didn't think about that. I, yeah, that's, that's right, because Xehanort, know, yeah, Z- Xehanort knows about Quadratum. So that's actually a thing I want to know how he knew about that. Mm-hmm. Well, and and I think that's a possibility as well, because that did happen in the final world, which is sort of an in-between place between uh, reality and unreality. Um <laughs> Because, I mean, Riku had to go there uh, so that he could even access Quadratum. So, I feel like that's a strong possibility as well. I have a fun bookmark uh, that kind of goes off of that by Titan, where it's two screenshots um, from Freya where they say, let's see, how can I put this? In essence, it's a world made up of mental energies. The astral dimension is swirling with emotions and memories. And then it cuts to a um clip from chain of memories where in the journal it says um castle oblivion consists of 13 floors above and 12 floors below ground with the content of its white rooms transforming in response to its visitors memories and organization 13 was conducting experiments on memory here so kind of connecting like the astral plane to the white rooms where kind of the area transforms by its inhabitants kind of memories and feelings. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think that kind of helps lend to the idea of sort of tapping into that astral plane as well, because while that fight did, while that fight between Sora and Kairi against Master Zane or in Melody and Memories was in the final world, it was also connected to Kairi's memories as well. So I feel like that just kind of lends more credence to that idea. I'm trying to also think of because well, we know obviously Naminé can you Naminé is primarily on Sora's memories, right? That's like her whole shtick. But I wonder if yeah. she can tap in to like other people's memories if maybe she hasn't like fully like unlocked it. And what if that might have some sort of connection to like their way into like this sort of astral plane? Through kind of the way how Sora was able to connect to Kairi uh, in Melody of Memories, if there's something that Naminé can unlock to allow, like, almost like a... I don't even know if you would necessarily be able to travel. Maybe she could. Maybe that's, like, the next, like, final form... Uh, not Kairi. Final form Naminé, where she, like, is able to enter the astral plane via the chain of memories uh, of <laughs> other people <laughs> via the astral plane. Because that would be pretty cool. Because to be honest, Naminé should have had a bigger role in Melody of Memories. If you're going to have a game yeah. about memories, you got to have Naminé. But yeah. if Naminé's out here traveling the astral planes via uh, memories to be able to like find Sora, then it's like, all right. And for all we know, maybe she was able to like access that um, space when she was in the final world as a star, you know, she, there was like a period of, she could have been doing anything. So she could have stumbled upon it. Uh, it could have maybe unlocked something. Uh, so that'd be pretty interesting. I, I always, mm-hmm. I always think it's fascinating whenever they can tie back gimmicks to previous games. And I hope that they do utilize like any, anything like that to be able to go forward um, with the with the, the any future titles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember this fan art um, ages ago. I can't remember it, um, but it's where um, she's helping unlock uh, Ven's repressed memories, and oh. as it goes, it backs, and poor baby is traumatized, so yeah, I think yeah, I, did, I feel like that would be a great way to like bring her back, because she has so much potential with her power, like, mm-hmm. it's just used anymore so i feel like that would be one way to like you know try to integrate like all of these mobile games um up until kingdom hearts 4 because again we're kind of in that transitionary period with uh these sagas Mm -hmm. yeah it's chris you were just talking about callbacks Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. kind of gimmicks and i also have a bookmark from cable town 
where there's a screenshot of one of the operators saying, almost all of the founder societies are currently unavailable. All that's left is snoozy. And then the next image is Kyrie saying, I knew that I'd find you snoozing down here. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, I, I, I get and it. I, yeah, I, I think it's implying that it's, it's, it's very possible that these scientists, that, that girl especially, that lady scientist could be, let's say it all together, is it Kyrie's grandma? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that that is a that is a that is an enigma from like the very start. Kyrie's grandma. Everyone has their theories that it's either Scold or uh, Ava, but or Stralitzia or mm -hmm. um, uh, other people. But um, but it's uh, I don't know. Like we have still have yet to learn of like what kind of projection this particular skull at Kylum is. Um, I think especially considering how, like, I'm not so sure how far back in the past before Xehanort's time is, uh, because I do know that Xehanort's mother um, is connected to Skuld, it's confirmed, but we don't know how far back Skuld mm -hmm. would be, because uh, she, she was somewhere, and apparently Subject X is Skuld, and then, you know, Zigbar, Break, Lushu got her out, and who knows where she's at? I don't know if he sent her back in time. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what is going on. Because I do know that Missy and Link does and will add the fact of, like, how Skuld and Xehanort's mother are connected. So, and that's, uh, and that actually brings me to another thought. Because, again, I don't know how far back it is. Um, but I have this theory that and I've been thinking about this and I'm still holding on to this and I won't it won't hurt my feelings if it doesn't. But I think the player character in Missing Link, I don't think it's the same player from Union Cross. No. Really? That that is Ooh. yeah, that is a thought I had because I don't know how else you can tie because this is it feels like it's still the same Scala where you know, where Xehanort's mother gave away baby Xehanort. So I don't again, but I don't know because, you know, Kingdom Hearts, they're not exactly, they don't set the time. Like, yeah, they don't say Nomura what math. year it is. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the year of Nomura math, yes. So we, we just have to stick with, like, how many years later, but not really a specific time. We just know there's a 10-year gap between Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep and the first Kingdom Hearts one. Mm -hmm. I said first Kingdom Hearts one, there's, whatever. Um, but, um... Now, do, do keep in mind, it does seem like they are telling the player that this is our player, because he has, or they, have the rusted keyblade from from Union Cross. But again, even that's mm -hmm. pretty vague. It's a matter of, like, they know how to wield a keyblade, but it's still a matter of, like, there's a lot of more mystery about this particular player character, rather than not it's the same from Union Cross or otherwise. So I I like the idea that it isn't the same player and the player from Union Cross could be one of the founders. I mean it's possible cuz they really threw us for a loop at the end of uh of Union Cross and Dark Road <laughs> when at the end of Union Cross we all thought we were Xehanort and then at the end of Dark mm. Road we we're like we were not Xehanort at all. So for them we to raise pull... the baby we raised the baby. We changed his diapers. We've seen it all. We've seen him poop and cry and scream. We we were there. <laughs> but yeah, but no, no, it's it's definitely a very Nomura thing to just make us believe one thing, and then we go all this time playing this game, and then it's like, nope, you were completely mm -hmm. off. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm I say I I can't speak for everybody, but I'm keeping an eye out on player character because I have my doubts. You know, but again, some people have already theorized, like, um, actually, speaking of Missing Link as well, uh, we come across these two figures with white hair watching the watching over these um, people from the Barak Society, the, the low life of the, the group, and I say the non ephemer bloodline people. Um, that's something we gotta keep in mind of with this, because it's all about societies and how they're split, and the, the people with white hair... People have already thought of, like, who they could be, and they could be named after Odin's ravens in, in um, oh. Norse mythology, I think. 
could have sworn I've seen that somewhere, but I do know people theorize that the two that watched over them, the white hair, the remnants from Advent Children, um, <laughs> Yazoo, and uh, freaking what's his name, <laughs> Laws. Um, yeah, but they but they could be named after Odin's ravens, if I can recall. Meaning, it's very possible what they believe, what fans are believing, is that we might meet a young Odin at this point. Now, if we see a young Odin, then that's where I say, okay, I, I'll, I'll completely throw it off the bag here and just believe that this is the same one somehow reincarnated. But again, I'm keeping an eye out, keeping an eye out on the player character just to mm -hmm. be safe in case that it isn't the same person because we don't know who the founders are yet. So, and we're in the beginning stage anyway, so we, of course we won't know. But I do think the people in the white hair, I think, have associations with, like, directly with the founders. That's a theory, though. So, take that with a grain of salt, of course. But, uh, that's my theory, mm -hmm. as of right now. Uh, on the topic of Odin, though, I have a thought, I have a thought that Odin is Yen Sid. I don't know how viable that thought is, but it goes to uh, it goes hand it, it kind of goes hand in hand because Ericus mentioned how Yen Sid trained alongside himself in Xehanort, and it's like the only time we saw any sort of involvement in training with Xehanort and Ericus was in Dark Road, and there was a man with a long beard. And mm -hmm. Yen Sid also has a uh, long beard. And then at the end of Dark Road, they're like, oh, Master Odin went to go live off somewhere on his own. Well, you're kind of what Yen Sid well, and, is doing. Well, and, yeah. you know, Odin, at least to me, looked like he had like a little bit of a wizard vibe going on. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like, I can I can honestly see that if, if those two characters are, in fact, the act actually the same. Because Yen Sid's a wizard. Odin kind of had a wizard-like appearance. I think mm -hmm. I think that's a viable theory right there. Yeah, but Disney will not. If, yeah, but if Disney will not allow them to admit it, though. So who knows what will happen? Mm. Mm -hmm. That would be some crazy involvement. Because to think of like like Mickey, Donald, and Goofy all have like their involvement within the story, but to just be like, no, <laughs> Yen Sid, he was there since the beginning. Like he's integral. He helped kill a kid. You know, <laughs> and I don't think that they would actually do that, but I would, mm -hmm. that would yeah. be, that would be something. Um, but that yeah, people, people have denied it, but we'll see, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking of like Donald and Goofy, um, I'm just thinking back to like, um, your episode with, uh, Dax and, um, that them and Mickey are like in quadratum, like. So how do you think that that could like tie into like Kingdom Hearts four and like could we see them maybe in Missing Link trying to research where do they could find Sora? Mm -hmm. I guess it really depends on how Missing Link is being interpreted. So in that episode, I talked about how Mickey is on a mission to find the Book of Prophecies and that he mm. puts it in Jiminy's, uh, not Jiminy, Chippendale's machine back in Disney Castle. And that Mickey is the one that kind of uh, goes through the events of Union Cross and is able to retell them to y Yen Sid and the rest. It also explains why Mickey was in the book along with Donald, Goofy, Chip, and Dale mm -hmm. because they have mm -hmm. the ability to access the book. Now, if the, the Book of Prophecies also talks about Missing Link, it is possible that they could it be involved in some way, shape, or form because Mickey... Now, correct me if I'm wrong, has been in, like, almost every game, with the exception of Dark Road. Obviously, Mickey's not in Dark Road, um, unless you Dark. count. I'm sure there was, like, a Mickey card or something. But Mickey's had involvement in, like, every game. I'm trying to think. Even if he wasn't directly, like, involved with the story, like, in Days, he was still, like, that scene where he was talking to... Um, Riku in the Twilight um, Twilight Town Forest, or he was always doing some yeah. missions in the background that we yeah. don't always know. So I mean, it's possible they got a shoehorn Mickey in there somewhere. Um, I guess yeah. Yeah, the only thing, uh, yeah, the only thing I haven't seen Mickey like in the story in part of the story at all is back cover. Um, and so mm -hmm. far, Missing Link has no Mickey yet, but we'll have to 
trophy. I mean, aside from him being a trophy, but other than that, though, like, back cover, I think it's the only one that Mickey's not involved in, if I can recall. Yeah. Yeah, there's but definitely... It's part... um, probably a lucky emblem still back there of... somewhere. Yeah, but um, he it's, it's still part of Union Cross, so technically he was in there, but not really. Yeah. You don't see him on screen, basically, mm -hmm. but... He was in Union Cross one way or another. We find out that there's like a Mickey's grandfather <laughs> who was a Keyblade wielder and he passed it down to Mickey. Oh my gosh, Walt Disney was a Keyblade master all along. I never would have guessed. <laughs> Walt Disney was Odin. Oh, we figured it out, guys. It was oh him. Y'all, hear me out. No Mickey in Missing Link, but Oswald Wait, the Lucky Rabbit as a as oh. they the Keyblade wielder and missing link. I'm calling it now. I'm calling it now. Oswald in Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> that would be perfect. And then maybe Oswald is like, becomes, um, well, no, he wouldn't be Mickey's mentor because that's what Yen said. Maybe they were like, they were like brothers in arms. And then Oswald, <laughs> Oswald perished on the battlefield. And then Mickey's like, oh, I need God. someone else to train me. And he goes to Yen Sid. Look, if you want ideas on how to implement Oswald into Kingdom Hearts, I've been thinking about this for the past <laughs> decade, and I've got, like, at least four ways that we can do it. <laughs> tell us. But... Please tell us. <laughs> that That's maybe for a different episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. the, the Oswald episode. Um, do you Isn't have any more Mickey bookmarks? getting a remaster, too? Yeah. Yeah, they are, actually. Um, I, don't know, I wonder what the games? timing of that. Hmm. It would be it would be interesting to see if it had any sort of connections um because it wasn't there how many epic mickey games was there two or three of them i think it's I think just two was there two yeah, I think it's okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just two uh and then they're remaking the first one well mm. i gotta i've never I got think... around to playing them i definitely should when they remake them for the switch right or is it for yeah. whatever new switch is coming well, out um, it, it sits for the Switch, and then I think it's also coming to uh, PS5 and Xbox. Um, oh, right, yeah, because it wasn't a oh, Nintendo really? exclusive, I forgot. I, I, I believe so. Yeah, um, it was It was a Wii, uh, it was a Wii game. Yeah, which, I, I, Epic Mickey with actually good camera control, I'm all for that, so. Hmm. And honestly, I killed to see Oswald in, in Kingdom Hearts. In hoping that Frank Walker reprises his role as Oswald, like he did in Epic Mickey, mm -hmm. that would be good enough for me. That would be amazing. <laughs> I I honestly cannot imagine a better voice for Oswald. Honestly, like it... I I met Frank Walker, and I think it'll it'll just make it even more epic, especially because <laughs> I met him in person <laughs> years ago. In fact, me, hit, meeting Frank Walker and Peter Cullen is actually the same place I met them in a in a con. Is where I saw. It that crap a crappy rendition of a keyblade and that's what prompted me to continue with kingdom hearts in the first place so technically mm -hmm. i gotta thank the voices of optimus and megatron for that so yay anyway that's not the point uh <laughs> oswald and kingdom hearts would be great that's all i'm trying to say uh oath you got any more bookmarks I have some, but not for like the lore and theories and everything. Um, I there was a great one by Carly Stella where she's talking about kind of the atmosphere of Missing Link, and I completely agree with the feeling that it looks very like historical and there's kind of like an ancient vibe to it. Mm -hmm. But she mentions that while she's playing, it feels like Kingdom Hearts, but different at the same time. And I kind of like how. It's being portrayed as like a Kingdom Hearts game, but in a different light. I mean, it is interesting. Like, I think noticed. About it. Yeah. I... I noticed that, like, it's got so many great Kingdom Hearts kind of aesthetics to it, but it's like a whole new story and how they're going into that kind of like Nordic um, history and just like the atmosphere of it. It just, I feel like we're going in like a whole new direction. And, um, well, I'm not entirely sure how I feel yet about the whole Bloodlines theory. I do like how it's going into this kind of historical era. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I wanted to chime in. Uh, I really like the aesthetic uh, that they're going for with Missing Link. It feels almost like steampunk meets Industrial Revolution kind of era. And I just think it's a really, honestly, like interesting way to go with it. 
Um, because we've got you know like steampunk Bluetooth earpieces and keyblades <laughs> with gears, but then we also have like <laughs> trains and you know, and and it's just it's it's really I think it's a really interesting aesthetic, and I think it's an interesting way to take it. Yeah, I mean, I love yeah, I just big city um... aesthetic, so I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I was the earpiece of, like, how they still talk to each other, which begs the question, like, how did that technology, like, get lost, and they have to, like, revamp it with uh, the gummy phones, like, who knows how many decades after the fact. Mm -hmm. You know, it just well, occurred and... to me. Sorry, real quick. Um, Missing Link, this is your chance. Can you, are you going to be the game that explains where the frick Damix came from? He's the only organization member <laughs> where we actually don't know where he's from. Missing Link, will you confirm this for us? Well, and, and, and Kingdom Hearts 3 was hinting that he had something to do with, like, the lineage of the Keyblade. Like, because uh, cause he was gathered with Marluxia, Larxene, mm -hmm. and, um, and one other. Um, Look sure. Who, who, um, yeah, look, well, yeah, looks are, sure, yeah. Weirdly enough, looks are, though, I think it associates with Yazora, though. I think so, too, because I feel like that's who is driving him around. But yeah, he was there and, with in the meeting, like Swoot said, so he must yeah. have some sort of ties somehow. Yeah, some ties, yeah. But, like, we at least know where, where he came from. We don't know, We mm -hmm. like, we assume that Demix would show up in Union Cross, but he didn't. So maybe crossing my fingers, missing link would have something to say about it. If not, then they're just pulling our leg, and we'll just have to confirm that he's just a funny bum they picked up off the street. And um, you know, I vibe with that. Who? Uh, I'll be. Ooh, actually, this just occurred to me. Maybe he is eventually part of the Barak Society because they're part of the, the lower class, and I don't think he's anywhere in Ephemer's bloodline. I could see him slacking off in the Barak society. Yeah, honestly, like, my thought was that if we're gonna see Demix show up as a Keyblade wielder at some point, this is probably the best place to slot him in at. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like with all the different societies, you could easily place him somewhere in, in Missing Link. Yeah, he's probably yeah, gonna pull agree. some sort of sneaky, like, he's gonna be a character this whole time, we had no idea... And then at the very end, he's going to reveal himself. And then we'll be like, great. We know nothing but like 1% more information about this character. Thanks, Nomura. Yeah, yeah Demis is the only one that, as far as I know, where we actually don't know. Like, we get the idea he was a Keyblade Builder, but we don't know where mm -hmm. or what time he came from. Um, and mm -hmm. but, what, but both Demix and Luxor have yet to re reveal their real names. So I'm quite excited what they are in the future i still stand firm on my theory that i made um on my youtube channel that uh demix is lushu and if that happens i am going to lose my mind <laughs> if if well, that, that theory that, were to come true that that would be interesting but you know mm -hmm. but zigbar is there so that kind of contradicts a little bit um, unless Zigbar, by some stretch of a miracle, decides to take over Demix somewhere down the line, then yeah, maybe. But well, well I would have thought that we've got time travel in the series. Yeah. Okay, we. Yeah. I I wouldn't put it past uh, mm -hmm. Nomura to have Lushu be in the same place. Um, right. Tw uh, twice at the same time. So yeah, because well, yeah, my other my other part of that theory was that uh, that uh, brain was. Um, or what was it? Brain ends up becoming Zigbar, and then all that other stuff, uh, you know, Brag and all that stuff, and he pretends to be Lushu uh, when he's not actually Lushu, and that, you know, he's a part of the organization because he has to watch over the the Keyblade and, and Xehanort and all that stuff. There's, the, there's like a whole thing. To, I don't want to elaborate the entire video, but I, I think that there's just some sort of level of diversion where it's like we think that Lushu is connected to Brain, and so we're going on this theory of like, okay, this is this is what's being presented to us. I'm of the mindset of what is Nomura trying to hide from us, and how do we sniff that out? And my mindset is that there's uh, Lushu is there, but he's not present, or if he is present, maybe he's um, inhabiting somebody else. And then you know, down the road, we find out 
the whole time, Lushu has looked like Demix, even from like the very first game. Um, and who knows if he like sends his body somewhere and then he takes over somebody else and he just keeps body swapping until uh, the current day. But but yeah, no, I think both uh, Luxord and Demix will get more information revealed to them on this game. They would have to because there's nothing else at this point. I mean, I guess they could do like a like a backstory sort of cutscene in a future game that explains why, but I feel like if you're going to do it, you're going to have to do it with these games because if Marluxia and Larxene got their moment in Union Cross, then it makes sense for the other two to be uh, in Missing Link. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, it just occurred to me, I just remembered Lucia was in that period of Missing Link because we see him covering the eye and people theory theorize that it is said to be an unwritten era mm -hmm. uh, according to the the thing so the theory was he covered the master's eye therefore the master didn't see the events mm. in this era therefore basically it didn't exist in his eyes but i i don't know um yeah. I, can't, I, I just have to remember that lucia's there so we got to keep an eye on where lucia might be at i'm curious too how long this game is going to take us because union cross was nearly a decade's worth of uh of waiting and playing so i i hope it does i hope yeah. i hope dark or not dark road i hope missing link kind of wraps up um relatively quickly like i don't mind playing it for a while i don't yeah. feel confident wasting money on it after what happened with union cross because all my all my jpegs are gone guys <laughs> all <laughs> yeah, the no, money i, I spent my, on I jpegs no <laughs> But the money is also what will help make Kingdom Hearts 3 and other good Square Enix games. So technically, yeah. you're, you're donating for Kingdom Hearts. It's okay. I'll go download <laughs> my JPEGs off the internet and print them out. And <laughs> I'll have them forever now. Uh, I am excited about the stickers. Did we see that the stickers are back? Yeah, I did. Uh, I did see somebody tweet that's like the real ones know where these originate from. And it's the, the ones from Union Cross, right? Unless are you talking yeah. about... Yeah, I'm happy that they made a return. I hope we get some new ones, too. That'd be really cool. I'm, I'm so excited have... to... Excuse me, sorry. No, you're good. Uh, I was just saying, have we talked about... Or has they? Has there been any mentions about anything about unions or groups or teams or anything of that sort? Um, uh, missing, like... Missing Link, I think... Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I think all, all I'm seeing is just, like, that there's, like, two opposing societies, but I'm still <laughs> just kind of, like, barely standing, so I think Prime or Oath might have a little bit more details than I do. Yeah, mm -hmm. basically, you're pretty much that. So, what I understand is that Missing Link, we must remind ourselves that Missing Link, the the biggest focus that Namor confirmed is that their, their focus is on societies. And both societies is basically... One part of one half of society is a bloodline of Ephemer, Ephemer's bloodline, and the other half is basically not Ephemer's bloodline. Mm -hmm. So, in a way, so in, instead of like four unions, it's just ba basically two unions fighting each other. Um, and who, like, and I, I, it actually just occurred to me of like, I'm, I'm already seeing the theme where it's going, how. The power of family or bloodlines is not a way of helping others. It's not like, you know, if we're going to go through, like, in, like, the moral of the story, if you will. You know, like, we learned, like, you know, your friends are your power um, and things like that. And um, there, and there's, like, Terra and Aqua lear learning about the friendship a little too late. Um, it, it's all about friendship at the end of the day. And, and it looks like they're delving it into families, from what I understand. Um, but like, it there's also like, let me see, let me see if I can construct this right. So I have this idea that you know, I can I can already see the moral of the story with this, is that bloodline your bloodline, is not the most important thing, of what makes you who you are. It doesn't it shouldn't define you as a person. It's a matter of like, you know, it's it, it's about connections, and you shouldn't be separating yourself uh but because of a bloodline and this affected xehanort generationally speaking you know mm -hmm. like they so the again we have yet to because the biggest thing i admit 
one of the biggest things I want to know the most of is Xehanort's mother. That is like really the main thing I'm curious about more than anything in Missing Link. Like you can give me the biggest reveal of Kingdom Hearts 4 within Missing Link, but give me more about Xehanort's mother. That is the one I want to know about the most. Um, and I always have this funny idea, and I don't know if we can add this to this discussion, where you know, another thing to keep in mind, too, is, like, how they learned about this child of destiny. Like, if this page was, like, added, because the Book of Prophecies, from what the Master of Masters said, ended with darkness prevails and light expires. Mm -hmm. um, but then this era says otherwise that this child is as titled the child of destiny will be the one to basically change the outcome of that last passage uh it, i want to know like how this page was added and where it came from and and why by some stretch of a miracle did they think it was xehanort that is the child of destiny other than they saw his talents as as like a tiny little sperm i don't know i don't know how this works so well, it's wasn't uh, there multiple child because wasn't Balder also a child of destiny or is that not I don't, confirmed? I don't think that was confirmed. I okay. just know we just know that he had a sensitive heart like Xehanort does. Um, yeah, because I thought that was I, the reason the child of destiny is the child of destiny, and also wouldn't Sora fall into that same category because all three of them could feel the feelings of others. Yeah. So, but here I'm actually gonna get to that point with Sora, and I. Um, I I don't think Xehanort is the child of destiny just because. Well, uh, here's the thing: people, uh, the the people of Missing Link. If we're going to assume this is the same timeline, they believe Xehanort to be this child of destiny because of his sensitive heart and because and he's also of Ephemer's bloodline. So they think because he's of the bloodline with those talents, surely he'd be the one to you know, you know, fulfill this prophecy. Mm -hmm. um, and I must remind mm -hmm. you all, too, that the prophecy also suggests that, you know, they could think and feel what others feel, they'll connect with other people, yet they stranded this child all alone on an island by himself with no people but an old man dying, you know? So isn't that kind of arrogant of them, you know? It's like their arrogance in thinking of this child, leaving him by himself on an island is already a path of disaster you know i wonder if the um, child of destiny prophecy is more of a curse than it is uh like a good prophecy because we've already if balder i mean like i said i'm not sure if balder is connected but anybody who can feel the feelings of other people are subjected to turn to the darkness then those people it probably would make sense to isolate him on an island um yeah only for him that, to that escape is... like uh, he's like a prison breaking well, off of destiny islands well here's the thing i think it's a misinterpretation on their part see uh, you're i think you're right about the fact they kept zane on an island to isolate him from darkness affecting him but that's a reverse effect because hmm. that i think made his heart more fragile because you need to grow into gaining these connections even as a child you know you can't you know it's kind of like if you're living in religion, you can't just keep them in just religion. You gotta allow them to, you know, let their insecurities out a little bit and understand the world. You can't just isolate them in a church and not understand the world. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, makes sense to me. sort of a uh, deal. Like they just try to like control his environment and just like no, that actually made him crazy and killed children <laughs> and turned into dark. Though he did end up like saving everyone in the end by chucking Palpatine into electricity, so eh. yeah, but um, at least had a mother. That's the thing. Yeah, he had a mother. Yep. He had he had an and I think that his connections with his mother and and the the stupid rule from the Jedi Order that they should sever ties with family. It and the thing is, what Anakin needed was love, and that's why without the love he needed, like. He, his mother did, and his wife to an extent, is what got him a little power hungry. He just wanted to feel loved and be free. With 
Xehanort, on the on the other hand, he was loved, but, but I don't think he was as connected to his caretaker when he got older. But he still lacked the proper means of connecting with other people um, like he should have growing up. You know, honestly, just the way he was raised, peaceful as it is, it's not normal. You know? Mm -hmm. So, um, and I think, so that's... I'm I'm still trying to decipher this, but I do genuinely think that Sora is the child of destiny, and that's a controversial take uh, from other people. Like the thing is that people didn't want Sora to be this chosen one, prophesied child, is because they don't want Sora to be a chosen one. And I get it; I completely understand. But the Book of Prophecies that shared this little passage about the child of destiny didn't specifically specify whether or not this child was a chosen keyblade wielder nor were they de nor were they confirmed to have a bloodline if they it just said they can connect and they can feel and you know and that's what Sora did and he and it's mm -hmm. they're from the Isles of Destiny Sora is directly from the Isles of Destiny they forced Xehanort into the Isles of Destiny so without people he should be connecting with so, and they just practically sent Xehanort there out of fear, trying to get this darkness out of the way as fast as they could, without even taking consideration for Xehanort's, you know, mental being, I get a mental health or whatever, to, mm. like, actually properly connect with people like he should. Like, if they left, if they just didn't do anything, didn't interfere and try to force a prophecy on a child... You know, I think Xehanort could have been the child of destiny, or maybe not. It, he he makes his own choices. You know, he chose to still be evil at the end of the day. But I still don't think it's any better just to leave a child by himself. Like even mm -hmm. with a with a caretaker, a caretaker who is old and dying, might I add, I don't think this was the wisest decision. It was literally out of arrogance because they're so confident in their bloodline. You mm. know. And I, I think mm -hmm. you can make the argument that, like, them basically shipping Xehanort off like that is kind of just the impetus of what caused him to go down the path that he did. I mean, I this is reminding me of that of that first cutscene from Birth by Sleep where you see young Xehanort and he's staring out at the ocean on Destiny Islands and he says, this world is just too small. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I think them sort of isolating him like that is kind of what led to this so well yeah like if that's the thing that's like any person that's isolated and alone would you know and especially when you didn't really grow up with any kids like this xanor really wanted friends like you see this at the end of dark road where he talks to his caretaker how he has dreams of these kids and he wondered if that's what having friends is like if that's not the loneliest line you hear i don't know what is mm -hmm. and so <laughs> um and this is actually one of the reasons why i think xanard is so fascinating because he's basically a coin flip of sora you know like xanard is like is from a bloodline he is chosen by a keyblade he he has basically everything but not really everything at the same time he was he wasn't given, like, any connections. He didn't have any kids to play with. Not a mother to nurture him. Um, and and both he and Sora have the same abilities, but Sora at least lived a normal life. You know, and that is the... He, Sora is the least expected candidate, but he, that is exactly why I think he is the child of destiny, because he wasn't chosen by Keyblade, nor was he of a famous bloodline. It's just a regular human boy. And it mm -hmm. could be anybody, you know. It's Sora, Sora didn't do it just because he wants to be a Keyblade Wilder, doesn't want to, doesn't even care about bloodlines. He just wants to help people, you know. Yeah, That's this, uh, this talk about bloodlines, though, is starting to get me thinking, too, because of how connected it seems like the Destiny Isle, Islands are to, like, everything. But the fact of, like, I've kind of been thinking this for a while. I haven't really been piecing it together, but I think I think we might have um, during this whole conversation. Have you noticed that there's not a lot of, like, white-haired characters in, like, 
they do kind of seem to fall into a certain kind of like how Xehanort fell into darkness. Riku fell into darkness. They both have so, their ties to Destiny Islands. I know Erd has white hair in Dark Road, but it makes me wonder um, because obviously we see the robed figure, Zemnis, the heart was, uh, not Zemnis, uh, Ansem. His heart was there mm -hmm. um, waiting on Destiny I Islands to send Xehanort to Scala at Kylan to set the, the, the future into motion. But then he waited there. But it's like he mm -hmm. was waiting there for the fall of Destiny Islands in Kingdom Hearts 1. But mm -hmm. that would allude that he knew that Riku and Sora were there. Is mm -hmm. Riku connected to Xehanort? Is he like his child somehow? That he like mm -hmm. came back to Destiny Islands, had a family, and then left? Are we about to find out that Riku is connected to Xehanort Wait. in this game about bloodlines? And that's why he knew that his child was going to fall into darkness. So he waited in, I... in the cavern for his child to essentially succumb to the darkness that he was fated to succumb to? Are you specifically why... talking? Are you specifically talking about like? Sorry, are you specifically talking about like Ansem in the cloak? Or are you talking about Xehanort in general? Because I wouldn't say if we're talking about Xehanort in general, I wouldn't say he'd be a father, but maybe a grandfather, or an uncle, or something like that. But I do yeah. think I like I I do see the idea of like Riku somehow being of at least in Ephemer's bloodline. I don't know, and I wouldn't say if he's directly <laughs> like with. Z like directly connected to Xehanort, but both Xehanort and Riku are connected to Ephemer. I mean, Ephemer probably banged a lot of women in the past. I don't know. The just a lot of people that bang just to get these multiple time multiple bloodlines. So I not I wouldn't pass it if there's just a multitude of bloodlines and not just one. Mm -hmm. I, I do Same like the that idea though. Oh, what was it? You cut out a little bit. This game is actually just a House of Dragons sort of ordeal. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, what were you saying, Swoon? Uh, I was just saying, I don't completely hate the idea of Riku being part of Ephemer's bloodline if mm -hmm. we're going to put such a large emphasis on it, especially because, uh, like y'all said, uh, we don't really see a lot of characters with white hair in the series. It's pretty much just Ephemer, Xehanort, and Riku. So I I'm not mm -hmm. against that idea. But everyone does have blue eyes, apparently, I guess. Yeah, well, Oath actually had a good uh, post on that about how the eyes are actually uh, correlating to uh, the specific characters. I love the color theory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I never thought about that until I saw your post. Uh, wait, I'm have... going to see if I can try and pull it up quick to mm -hmm. talk about it. Because ever since I saw that, and I hate that I can't remember exactly where i saw it but um it's the theory that blue represents light orange represents darkness green represents the path in between and brown represents both light and darkness hmm. what does that make silver silver eyes true hmm. oh. yeah i forgot silver eyes was an option as well yeah ha have we seen any correlation with eye colors in Missing Link with the characters? Has anybody been standing I... out? Or if they all have just had blue eyes? I think they mostly all just have blue eyes by far. I think someone pointed it out on Twitter, if I can recall. Hmm. I guess we're going to have to, on top of paying attention to uh, <laughs> to whatever white hair characters are doing, <laughs> just seeing like everyone's eye colors and just making like a mental note. It's like, okay, he's got orange eyes. You got to watch out for him. But then they're going to the find out is, that yeah. it's like bloodline related, the, the, the eye colors, and then like they're going to somehow figure out eye color changes. But then there's Yuzora, who has two eye colors. So then <laughs> that's a whole different can of worms, I would assume. Yeah, and um, Xehanort basically has his mama's eyes. So I, I'm very curious how that's... I, I figure it could be like a genetic thing, honestly. But like at the same time, mm -hmm. I would like to know... I, I figure maybe the silver could be just... Xehanort's light, and then the yellow ice is just his darkness. I don't know. I could be wrong. Hmm. It is possible. If there's something special with, like, his bloodline, which, again, 
could be covered in missing link since it seems like bloodline is going to be like a big um a big factor mm -hmm. we could get that answer um i did I did see an edit of someone deciding to do a color edit on like Xehanort's eyes that we see him with like blue eyes. It, it's kind of <laughs> <laughs> so. There was one post I did see recently on Twitter. Uh, there's like, is there feathers that are introduced into the game that can like control people? Is that um, what the new gimmick yeah. is? Yes, so I, I, I've actually seen this um, mm -hmm. a little bit uh, on Twitter, and I, I have been very interested in seeing where this bit goes, because it seems like the feathers are tied to darkness and that they can be used to control somebody, um, which we've only ever seen feathers tied to darkness in one of our instances that I can yeah. think of, and everybody's <laughs> favorite silver-haired sword uh, <laughs> anime sword boy, so you know... <laughs> Well, I'm yeah. very interested to see where that goes. <laughs> That's what got me too, because I was just like, people weren't referencing Sephiroth, but I'm like, oh, bro, that's a Sephiroth. That's Sephiroth. What's Sephiroth mm -hmm. doing in Missing Link? Obviously, it's not going to be Sephiroth, but like, for me, I was just like, all right, that's interesting. So like, the feathers are consuming whoever has them in their bodies, and then they forget everything once the feather is removed. So part of me yeah. also wonders going back to the whole eye color theory, if that might be... Have we seen anybody possessed um, by the feathers yet? Or is that just like a screenshot that they were kind of talking about? It was just Office. the two... It was just the two guards mm -hmm. um, that were there to interrogate. Um, the interrogation was they, they noticed that the player character was like um, a, a bit suspicious to a lot of people because they never seen this, this kid before. Mm -hmm. um, but here's the thing. I, I like the idea that they're possessed, quote unquote, possessed by darkness, but they're asking specific questions about where this kid came from, to which um, I must add the scene before that, the scientists have noticed that there was a kid roaming around that's not from Scala. So they basically says we need to send someone there. So I think, now I, I could be completely wrong, but I think those feathers technically might be from the founders themselves like they use these feathers to kind of go to these people specifically but it is a bit suspicious so i i find it weird that the founders would have the chance to if they if that's the case at all that they use these feathers to um basically be their eyes and ears and and ask them directly about the kid um but um, then the guy, the Nept, took out the feathers and the guards have no idea what's going on. And then mm. after that, we see those two figures, which I think they are from the higher societies. So I think, and I think those guys are the ones that might be sent from the scientists or the founders because no one's talking about the founders yet. And I think that's something we need to, to keep in mind on. Obviously, I could be wrong, but um, but if it, it is in fact that feathers are possessed like the by darkness that would be a very interesting take in kingdom hearts lore but i don't think that is a common way for darkness to possess people with feathers again that's a very sephiroth that feels very sephiroth but um, <laughs> it does 100 percent, yeah the other time that we've uh feathers in the games is um that little um scene um during the credits of birth by sleep where uh zach uh suddenly disappears from olympus coliseum so if like that's a way manifestation of darkness or like possession what does that say like what happened to him or like you know the whole mm. arc with like that's our deal are we gonna see that circle back anytime soon so uh that i don't know i think that one that one itself i feel still directly connects with sephiroth and i think that's just a wink wink nudge nudge Hey, mm -hmm. yo, play Crisis Core, notch, notch, wink, wink. You know, I, I feel that's more of an advertisement, if anything. But I would still love to know what happened to Zack in Kingdom Hearts. I need to know what happened to him. Clearly, when He's Cloud and Sephiroth went into the sky and they disappeared, they went to Missing Link. And then the feather was somebody from Missing Link uh... came in, they grabbed Zack. So clearly, there's going to be Final Fantasy VII characters in Missing Link. That's where they went. <laughs> that, look, that's my look, theory. We, if we can use Missing Link to somehow, like, tie that scene from the end of birth by sleep like back into the story i will be so happy like one of like not not plugging my content but like 
uh, I made a whole TikTok about this like a couple years ago, like what actually happened to Zach after Birth by Sleep, and if we can, and if Missing Link can somehow answer that, I'm all about mm -hmm. it. Let's do it. I think it would be so funny just to have like random moments in games where just you see Cloud and Sephiroth fighting in like the background and they just keep like teleporting and then like disappearing into like other games and then it's just like <laughs> they mysteriously show up and I'm like bruh like guys stop fighting you like you keep warping from game to game also missed opportunity because in Kingdom Hearts 3 in the Toy Story world they had toy figures of the Dissidia, um, of Dissidia reference. Toy Sephiroth should have been there. Toy Sephiroth should have busted behind like a bunch of boxes, and you should have fought him as a toy. Um, Missed opportunity. Could... I stand on this forever. That could have been a really cool <laughs> secret boss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's it's really funny how hearing the more mention like. You know, understandable. He he's afraid that people will be getting tired of Sephiroth, but most of us are just like. Uh, that's just the best part. Uh, at least for the number titled games, you could have given us a last hurrah with Sephiroth for the third game, and we'll be fine after that. But, mm -hmm. you know, but I can understand why he didn't add it because he felt like, you know, people could be tired of it. He was surprised to find out, no, we're, we're, we're actually, we'll be very happy if you brought them back, let alone <laughs> Final Fantasy characters. And he's like, well, I'll at least put in Final Fantasy characters, I guess. I'm surprised you guys wanted them, but here you go. I mean, Missing Link could be a good opportunity to get some anyway. older representations in, like... Yeah. Well, I know Nomura doesn't like to put characters that he doesn't design in. He made the exception for Vivi. But if there was going to be a game where Final Fantasy 1, 2, 3, and 4 characters showed up, it would definitely be Missing Link, I would feel like. I get posters. Like, you'll see, like, random posters, and you see, like, Warrior of Light from Final Fantasy 1. I, I can <laughs> see that honestly um but yeah i'm definitely one of those few that i'm like i'm i'm open to more final fantasy but i'm not angry if they don't have final fantasy mm -hmm. it didn't occur to me in kingdom hearts 3 but not having final fantasy characters in 3 was kind of weird especially how relevant they mm -hmm. were in into one and two but i could see why he didn't but at the same time it, it's a mixed bag for me like i don't hate mm -hmm. it but i'm also kind of sad at the same time basically yeah i, I mean, it was like of... oh and then it? it's like okay, we have the original story going on just like we gotta focus on the original story we'll leave mm -hmm. we'll put a pin on the guys yeah. mm -hmm. i i'm i'm in the camp of i really wish that they would have included more final fantasy characters in the original version of kingdom hearts 3 uh before the dlc uh just because at least the radiant garden gang you know feel important to the plot of the series so i really would like to see them but if they don't but if, if going forward they don't add any additional characters from final fantasy you know if we don't see lightning or noctis i'm not gonna you know be i'm not gonna be upset about it at the end of the day because at the very least we have moogles and they have mm -hmm. fun hats and uh jackets now so hell yeah so if i could request at least a couple things have us let us have a gilgamesh and let us write chocobos that's all mm. I ask. <laughs> I'm going to agree with uh, the like base Kingdom Hearts 3 not having them. Because in a way, it did feel a little incomplete. At least without the Radiant Garden gang. Since mm -hmm. they've been in every other one, it just kind of felt a little empty without them there. Right. Especially little, since we did go to Radiant yeah. Garden multiple times. Well, Mickey and Riku went to Radiant Garden. So it was possible they could have just had like a quick cameo. I do get their yeah. stories tied up, but it, it would have been interesting, even in like the Olympus, uh, in Olympus, just to have someone, you know, even if they're mm -hmm. not really super story relevant, just to be like, oh, hey, there's, uh, I don't, I don't even know. I guess they could have referenced some of the previous characters. I mean, they kind of do in the beginning with the intro, they mentioned but. Not in the uh, yeah. Or in the intro but to yeah. the level. It, it would have been nice to have more inclusion. I agree. It's, it's kind of like, I get it, but also at the same time, it's, I don't know. I, I feel like if anything, it should have been like DLC where they unlock the Coliseum and then you could go back and fight all like, you know, the Final Fantasy characters and they could have added some new ones in there too. Um, Mots took care of that. That is true. <laughs> that is true. 
I did have, um, I did see some discourse online though about the forest world that's in Missing Link. Now, a lot of people are saying that it could be a number of different Disney titles because they see the way the forest is laid out. I've seen some people say that it looks like the forest from The Incredibles um, when Mr. Incredible oh. is fighting, I think, one of the uh, the robots. I think other people have mentioned Jungle Book. Personally, for me, it reminds me a lot of the Tangled world. Have you guys had any theories of yours of yourselves and what you think that world could be, unless it's supposed to just be a plain forest? I think it's supposed to reference to a Disney world, and we just haven't seen what Disney characters live in it. But I'm pretty firm that it's a Tangled world. Well, Chris, I, I'm I, gonna I, agree with that one too. You think it's Tangled as well? I do. Well, I've seen someone post a clip of them in the forest. I think it was Demo. I'm I'm not so sure. But he was in that forest, and he went through all different angles. Like, he looked up at the sky, and I saw palm trees. So, I could see why people would think, like, they're... Like, I've seen people, like, predict, like, Lilo and Stitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw that, too. I've also seen some but, people predict uh, Moana as well. Yeah, mm. uh, but the idea of the Incredibles, it never occurred to me. Like, I'm actually kind of open to that idea, but I think we should reserve the Incredibles for page four. I don't know about you or going forward, but mm -hmm. I'm open for the Incredibles to be in in King, in Missing Link. But I've actually also seen that it's possible that it might not be a Disney World, but an original world. That some actually people theorize that it could be a different part of Destiny Island. Mm. That's what I've been hearing. You know, I, I'm actually true. kind. Of, I am kind of on board with the idea of seeing a different side of Destiny Islands. I mean, it would make sense considering how they put Zaynord into Destiny Islands at one point. So mm -hmm. I like to see how they portray. Like, I actually want to know the origins of Destiny Islands anyway. So, and I think Missing Link could be the game that could share its origins. I think, mm -hmm. and I don't know if they are even planning to reveal any disney worlds yet this early so i think it'll be it, i think it would make more sense um that i think it could be a destiny islands in a different location but i'm i'm still open for it to be like either it, it doesn't matter to me though honestly mm -hmm. surprise me basically but i'm kind of more on board of the idea that it could be destiny islands because from that video i've seen palm trees so I don't know what other else of a conclusion I could think of. Yeah, I, that, I mean, that's a solid point. I didn't even think about the palm trees. But if it is, if it is a world based around the Incredibles, I think that would lend itself to the themes that we see that we've seen coming across so far, with Missing Link talking about bloodlines, with the lineage of superheroes, with Mister Incredible mm. last and, mm, and his yeah. wife and their children, uh, talk, talking about society. You've got superheroes becoming outcasts in society in the incredibles i feel like there's some uh thematic through lines that from the incredibles that could lend itself to the themes of missing link and so right. if it is that i feel like it's something that could slot in and work very well here oh i want it to be tangled so bad but that sounds so good that <laughs> i actually like that a lot more <laughs> i do too yeah because well, my hey, thought process with Tangled was that they were going to explore more about the powers of the flower that gives Rapunzel's, uh, Rapunzel her power. And so I'm like, oh, this must be... What was that? The series does? The Tangled series? Yeah, the, the series. Oh, do yeah, they? The series, yeah, oh, they I did, didn't know. They, 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 yeah, they did cover like where the powers came from. Uh -huh. um, I, I didn't see the whole show, but I did see some scattered clips online, so... Uh, I, I'd say give it a look yourself, and it is interesting. Hmm. Yeah, because I, I figured I was like, uh, maybe it's like a dark road situation because they say that the worlds get restored or are created at like different um, pace, at like their own pace. So like when we go to, I think when we go to Agraba initially, there wasn't anybody there, but then when we go back, like Jafar was there, or yeah, Jafar was there, and also the events of what was happening in that world was also before like you know jafar aladdin wasn't even like mentioned at all um so it's possible that it could this could be like tangled but like before the events of kingdom hearts 3 mm -hmm. tangled happened but then i guess you right. also i don't know the whole 
this is going back to Nomura math of like the timeline of a world in like if it takes place in um missing link is it too far along for like for it to appear like again in a future world but i guess i don't know because the the wreck it ralph world i guess is also a kind of in a weird scenario where mm -hmm. is it a <laughs> is it a world of fairy tale because we don't really know because a lot of the worlds were projections so it makes you curious if we're ever going to see wreck it ralph again or if it's just like a one and done union cross sort of deal um Though I do feel like Union Cross did lend itself to using specific worlds because of the princesses of heart and tying that back to Maleficent and trapping her into the uh, Enchanted Dominion version uh, so they could essentially forward the plot to make her go to uh, Back to the Future. But I'm wondering if there's anything that they would do similar with Missing Link when it comes to Disney World selections, or if it's just going to be an entirely new slate of worlds. Um, because I do see all the characters in the little um, statues that they have, and it's like, it makes me wonder, like, you had to create new models for a lot of those characters. Like, are those characters we're going to see again? I guess if we don't see them in uh, Missing Link, we could potentially see them in a future Kingdom Hearts game. It seems like a lot of work to make a model that you're only going to use as, like, uh, like a, a weapon of sorts or an item so i'm curious to see what kind of connections they're gonna have with disney and like what disney worlds are gonna pick um, mm, yeah. because obviously they have to put disney to fill in if it's a mobile game there's gotta be some sort of like grinding aspect and obviously the disney worlds are known to be the grinding sort of filler uh aspect to every kingdom hearts game What's going to be our Agrabah in Missing Link? That is the question. <laughs> <sighs> I don't know. That's like a whole different discussion to be like, let's look at all the worlds that have not been picked and see what, what they could fit in to, uh, <laughs> to a new game. Because, I mean, I, I've had the theory that Quadratum being in a different reality would lend itself to like third party worlds being selected. So like Avatar, Marvel, Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Like if you're going to have another reality where Quadratum is the real life, then it would make sense for different properties that aren't necessarily cartoon properties to exist. Cause it wouldn't be, it would be weird if the Moana world existed in Quadratum and like the unreality, like Moana should exist in the, the side of reality to their reality. Um, then you but have Miss... Pirates of the, but then oh, we have Pirates of the Caribbean, also part of the Disney side. So, like, I get it. You're talking yeah. about the third party stuff. I understand, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know. But I did notice that you mentioned a lot of live action properties, and I hope they don't just stick with live action properties. You know, because you know mm -hmm. there needs. I think there still needs to be some Disney worlds to be mentioned to be explored. You know, I do believe there's going to be less worlds to visit, but I don't want it to be exclusively live action based. Like, I want Star Wars as much as the next guy. I'm open to Marvel. I I'm not too keen of Avatar personally, but uh, even I can see this happening. But even then, I don't want them to just stick with just live action um, mm -hmm. assets. I would love them to still go into the to appropriately the 3D worlds. And Namor did say that if when Sora does go back to his world, because we we see like he's grown up, but he still has like you know his style is mm -hmm. different. But that he it's not the definitive style going forward. If he went back to his world, it'll be like what you see in Kingdom Hearts three, you know. So um um, but I, I I'm I'm not saying that Star Wars or Marvel should not be in Kingdom Hearts four, nor do I see it not be a possibility because I think it will. We. The Star Wars shot has proven that, but mm -hmm. I still think, I don't think they should just do the live action assets. That's where I'm getting a little worried. I'm not, I'm not really an angry person where I'm like, I'm not, I'm not always going to scoff at certain ideas. I'll be, I'll be more disheartened if anything, but I, point being, I just hope they don't just stick with live action properties and they can still do like three Disney properties like honestly mm -hmm. even if like Namora can do whatever he wants you know I don't really care if even Star Wars was in the original world just as long as you make it fun 
it, it doesn't matter to me. You can make it nonsensical in a sense all you want. Just let me have fun. But other than that, though, I just hope you don't just stick with just one thing. You know, because you mix it up at least with the other worlds in your games in the past. You've put, like, two live-action properties by far in that world. And yes, they are strictly Disney property. But for all I know, you could have added, like, in Kingdom Hearts 3, other live-action adaptations if you wanted to. But you didn't. You didn't with the 3D animated movies. And I think that's something they should focus on going forward. So here's my way, question. Hmm? What was that? I was going to say, heaven forbid, don't do the live action adaptations. <laughs> that's, yeah. the I, that's the one thing I don't yeah. want. Yeah, I don't, I don't want Angelina that. Angelina Jolie left it in Kingdom Hearts 4. It yeah. has to happen. I demand it. <laughs> it's, just a re it's just a live action remake of uh, that's what Kingdom Hearts 4 is. It's just the retelling of the Kingdom Hearts series, but with live action characters. Oh, we could I, I finally honestly, get we could finally get Jungle Book in Kingdom Hearts. It's just the live action version. A, a, or yeah. Sora running into the live action Beauty and the Beast. Oh yeah. Oh wait, I don't want to see Miss Potts. That that would Miss. I don't like Miss Potts. <laughs> she creeps me out. <laughs> um, so kind of going hand in hand though. What what's a world that you guys want to see that we haven't seen yet? Um, be it Missing Link or Kingdom Hearts Four. Okay, so uh, I've been asking for this uh, for years, and anytime there's a new Kingdom Hearts game, I'm going to ask for it, and Namura's going to say "f you," and I'm not going to get it. Um, Hold on, and I'm gonna, I'm waiting for it. I think I know what you're going to say. Just say it. It's not Maybe? the Jungle Book. I want Treasure no. Planet. Can we please get it? Planet. Can we please it's get it? What is saying? I signed the petition. I joined the <laughs> Facebook group. Where's my Treasure Planet world, Namura? <laughs> Technically, it's those treasure orbs in space in the gummy ship. That wasn't That's enough for me. <laughs> it's not the world, I know, but it's the closest reference we'll get. <laughs> Haven't they tried to put Treasure Planet in Kingdom Hearts um, like twice? Yeah, they did. They did in Dream Drop Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, they, so somebody found in the files for Dream Drop Distance on the 3DS version, um, they found a ship model. Uh, it's 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 uh it's map data so like you so they were able to load it up and walk around on the ship uh mm -hmm. it was very early development though like there's no textures there's just very little detail um from how the folder uh for how, <laughs> so from how the folders are labeled in dream drop distances files they were able to glean that uh i think the folder that the ship was located in was labeled as like tp for like treasure planet mm -hmm. so that's where that that thought is coming from. So it's possible that they tried to, or were thinking about it, but we didn't get the full world, and I still want it, Namura. Where is it at? Well, because I also heard that Neverland wasn't supposed to be in Kingdom Hearts 1, and that it was supposed to be a treasure planet world. That's why the only area you explore is the ship, because it was supposed to be treasure planet, but then I think they must have scrapped it, maybe midway in production. Granted, KH1 it had like a lot of stuff like that, because Buzz and Woody were supposed to be in it too, and they scrapped them as well. I, I know Buzz and Woody were supposed to be in Kingdom Hearts Two as summons. I don't know oh, about two. Kingdom Hearts One. Oh, okay. Um, I, but I heard Charlie's story was going to be in the first game, if I can recall. Um, Treasure Planet did come out in like 2002, which is right around the time Kingdom Hearts One mm. came out. So it is possible mm -hmm. that maybe they were thinking about using it, but that but the movie wasn't out yet, so maybe they decided to just uh, hold off and use uh, an already established film there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is funny to think that, like, out of all the times that... Because, like, I, we know that in Kingdom Hearts 3, they were working on production of the Frozen world when Frozen was being released. Um, and even the thought of, like, oh, if Treasure Planet was out at the same time as Kingdom Hearts 1 to kind of work as, like, a, a tie-in, as, like, a promotional thing. And then also... The Kingdom Hearts or the Final Fantasy characters in Kingdom Hearts 2 dressed up as their Advent Children outfit to advertise Advent Children. But out of <laughs> out of all the Disney things that they were like, we are going to cross promote and that successfully made it in. It wasn't Treasure Planet, but but goddamn Chicken Little. Chicken Little oh, actually wait. made it through. Yeah, he made it in as a summon. <laughs> there's no world. There's no nothing. Dude, if we get a okay. Chicken Little world... It has to be. It has to make so, sense. It has to tie in together. 
you know what's funny i think i heard they just add a chick a little because i think they just wanted to add something and they didn't get any assets they didn't were not giving a digital model whatsoever they just they were just as blind in the dark about chicken little they just you know modeled it after looking at the trailers of chicken little and that was it mm. I will say this. Hey, at least they got Zach Braff to come to come in and voice a couple lives for Chicken Little. So <laughs> yeah. Zach Braff is in Kingdom Hearts, everybody. <laughs> Heck yeah. Uh Oath, do you have any uh thoughts on what world you would want to see? I really want to see Coco. Yes. Mm. Oh my god. I feel Coco like Coco would be so that perfect. That would be really fun. I feel I feel like that's definitely like a world. So okay. My thing is that Melody of Memories should have just been like Kyrie going on adventures. And there are certain worlds that I feel like would fit Kyrie um, in her learning about herself and like her her journey of, uh, you know, strength and finding herself. Encanto for sure is one. And Coco, I feel like is another one would be so fitting for Kyrie. Um, along with, you know, obviously there's other worlds like Moana, I think would be a good fit. But <sighs> Coco would be so perfect. Oh, uh raya in the last dragon i think is mm -hmm. what it's called because there's literally oh, a princess of really heart one too. there's a princess of heart literally in the movie so that would be so fitting i won't um, get into it too much but when i was uh watching raya in the la end of the last dragon um as i was watching it, i was like wow this would honestly like from a level design perspective make a great world mm -hmm. <laughs> it would i need that armadillo as a summon 100 <laughs> percent but yeah, no, Coco, Coco is a great world because especially since it explores on the concept of like connections and family bloodlines. So honestly, it would probably be a better benefit for Missing Link. Um, mm -hmm. I would love to see that. Yeah. Oh my God, that would be so, oh, that's such a good idea. Uh, I feel like too, not like a, um, I don't know if it was like in the movies or straight to DVD, but The Lion King 2 would be mm -hmm. really fun. I mean, well, we and, we did get three musketeers, mm -hmm. so yeah, we, we could get Lion King too. Jafar, technically, so yeah, we did get Return of the Jafar mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, so it, it's on the table. It's an option. Uh, what about you, Prime? What is your what is your pick? If we're talking strictly Disney, like straight out Disney property made by Disney, um. So, Treasure Planet obviously has always been the popular, underrated box office flop favorite. But I also think, by level design wise, and this is technically another one people talked about, and I'm kind of on that same boat. Atlantis yeah. would be would be an incredible, like by design, would be really cool to see. Um, it is like I always have this funny. I made a video on TikTok like a long time ago. I call it a head cannon, but that's more of like just a funny idea. Really, it's not really really the case. But I mean, heaven forbid if it did. Uh, but I kind of like the idea how like Zaynard could be directly linked to Atlantis because he's got that white hair and mm -hmm. the dark skin like the people of Atlantis. And <laughs> the king happens to be voiced um, by the late Leonard Nimoy of all mm -hmm. people. So that's kind of funny. But um. But if we're talking like, like just any like within the Disney realm, even like the third party, um, so Disney strictly Atlantis. But like even though this quote unquote, I'm gonna quote unquote confirm they haven't confirmed this yet. But I really am all for Star Wars in Kingdom Hearts. That is mm -hmm. just something I wanted since I was a kid. I like this. Like the thing is. When I discovered Kingdom Hearts, it was also where I saw Revenge of the Sith as a trailer. And it, in the same place, mind you. So it's kind of like in the same place where I had loved the same things. And I remember drawing fan art. I posted this on Twitter. Um, of Yoda. He was, he was, he was and still is my favorite character. Long before Grogu was cool. Um, he, um, I always drew him with a keyblade a few times. And so technically that was my very first ever kingdom hearts fan art and star wars is what kind of prompted me to be an art artist in the first place um so but just the um like, like it doesn't matter where which direction they go whether it's the the original trilogies or if it's the prequels preferably one of the two um just 
it, it's always something I've wanted since I was a kid. So if by some stretch of a miracle they did confirm that Star Wars might be in Kingdom Hearts 4, um, it would literally be a childhood dream come true, honestly. And I think um, it, it'll it'll just be really cool just how they handle it. But should that be confirmed? But if we're talking, but I I figure I'd say that anyway, just to see if I could just get on my chest a bit. But if we're talking strictly Disney, then yeah, I probably would pick Atlantis just mm -hmm. because of the really cool level design and I think the story of like. A society in itself, I think, would be. Well, I, I can see that working for Missing Link as well, because it re relies on society and family, bloodlines, and that sort of thing. Um, but their culture is interesting, and the the aesthetic of a lot of blue in their culture is is very pretty. And I can see Square Enix pulling off a really pretty crystal blue in, in that environment. Um, but other than that, though, I just think it will be very cool to have atlantis so atlantis mm -hmm. strictly with disney is my answer and uh kind of building off of what you were talking about i mean i've always thought star wars would be a good fit because you have that classic theme of dark versus light that is ever present mm -hmm. in kingdom hearts but also thinking about how missing link is talking about you know bloodlines and that sort of lineage i think the uh the original trilogy for star wars with that dynamic between Luke and Darth Vader, who spoiler is his father, you know, I feel like you could tie that into that theme of bloodlines that uh, Missing Link looks like it wants to uh, delve into. So mm -hmm. I think yeah, and it and it looks it could work like in that title as well. yeah, yeah, and if and it does look like it, it again if they confirm this and seeing how there's an ATST at the corner of that screenshot. It looked like they're going to focus on Return of the Jedi, um, which I think would work like as a gameplay perspective and a story perspective. I think it would work very well. Which again, I, I this is why I slightly recommend you at least look up the original trilogy movies at least, so you can get some context of what I'm talking about. Like even if you know the spoiler, I think it'll be best if you at least get some emotional attachment and understand why but that's a whole discussion for another time but yeah it's uh uh yeah that <laughs> <laughs> all right eliza what's your pick uh so i actually have a few picks i mean obviously um you know treasure planet um atlantis anything to give the box office bombs more love um but my top three for completely different reasons so if we want to go for this property needs more love princess and the frog you gotta yes. give my girl tiana some more Yes. If they yes, like yes, find yes. a way to like bring back the Shadow Man, like I think that would be great. And also Keith fucking David, everybody, come on. <laughs> uh, right. I think it would be fun to see them and like maybe see like the voodoo spirits as like totally separate entities from darkness. I think that would be fun to play with. Oh. And uh, let's see. And uh, also with a uh, with what Briss said about Moana, I think that would make like a great like character driven world for like someone like Kyrie or like any one of the female characters since it's like a very like female driven story. So I think that would be great. And and I'm kind of like tossing it between the two now that I'm thinking about it. But if we want to go something that ties into like you know legacies, bloodlines, history, um, you either got to go with uh, Pixar's Brave, or as mm. controversial as it. Uh, bringing back Frozen with the plot of Frozen 2, which, say what you will about the movie, um, as, like, um, what is it, Elsa was going through Ataha, and I was thinking, like, this is where Ven visits and has his mental breakdown about finding out about his past. Oh, <laughs> oh heck yeah. Can I just really quick point this out? I can't help but feel like both Ventus and Cloud have this weird brain headache function. I I just find it funny. That they both have the similar uh, brain ache problem. <laughs> it's the blonde spiky hair. It just comes with problems. Yeah. <laughs> they get too much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, no. Those are all good picks. But you know what? We need an Aristocat world. And you know what? Aww. We need Axel as a cat. Aww. End of story. <laughs> well, actually... <laughs> I have like an entire scene like planned out. So you know, um, you seen the first like Hellboy where like he saves like that little box of kittens. Mm -hmm. 
that's how you introduce the Aristocats is like one of the heroes. I'm sticking with Axel. I don't know why, but like, you know, he just like finds like, you know, the kittens and um, Duchess and he saves them and then like gets rewarded and stuff like that. I did like similar to like Hellboy. I just think it's cute. So and sweet. Well, honestly, <laughs> technically Aristocats technically made it to Kingdom Hearts just as an accessory in 2.8 in 0.2. Where well, the accessory is just cat ears, just white cat ears, and it's tiled Marie. Mm. Uh. Yeah, I, I, I think a, any way they put it in, because I know that they're probably like at the end of using like animal worlds, because um, it's like, what can you do when you have so many of them? You know, you already gave us Lion Sora, and you kind of gave us a little bit of an animal Sora with Monsters, Inc., but, I don't know, there's just something funny about, even if that was, like, what Kyrie and Axel were doing during their training, it's like they were visiting different worlds, but it was very, like, calm, mundane worlds that weren't attacked by the Heartless, and they were just assisting by doing, like, normal, everyday tasks. There's something, like, endearing seeing a Kyrie and Axel cat just, like, going on adventures and having, like, their little keyblades to help them unlock different areas for the cats to venture to. I think that'd be great. If we're talking about animal worlds. Um, I, I see a lot of people saying that they want a Zootopia world. I was just thinking that. I, but that'd be honestly, cool too. yeah. But honestly, uh, I think <laughs> I, I think a movie that that would make for a great world in Kingdom Hearts, uh, honestly, is Robin Hood. The the yes. classic world of the animals, Ooh. like that, would honestly, in my opinion, make for a great world. And if and, they want to ever show us a Kyrie and Axel, you know, little little side mission, you know, to, from the training period, that would be a great mm-hmm. Disney World for them to visit. Yeah. Uh, so another thing, and I have a feeling if Dax were here, I I, I don't recall if he mentioned this, but um, I think he would like to have the Emperor's New Groove. Yeah. In there. Yeah, it's his yeah. favorite movie. Uh, Emperor's New Groove would be so fun. That would be so funny, actually. Yeah, we talked about I, I, that in the last episode because he wasn't a, yeah. he wasn't on it uh, he wasn't for it at first. But then I'm like, but Llama Sora, and he's like, yes, I need it for <laughs> specifically for <laughs> Llama Sora. And I think Dax made mention of a of a Kronk boss fight that would be pretty yeah. Cool. Oh, that yeah, would be yeah. so cute. That'd be so fun. Oh, so all all good picks, all good picks. Well, I think we're uh. I think we're definitely getting towards the end here. We've definitely be gapped for for quite a while. Um, are there any yeah. other closing thoughts that you guys have that you want to throw in? Oh, if you have any more uh, bookmarks that you want to share, I wanted to just throw a shout out to thank all the beta testers that have been sharing everything that they have been experiencing because it's super yeah. fun to get to see mm-hmm. kind of what they're seeing, and it takes an effort for them to have to like share their thoughts and share any screenshots and everything. So I just wanted to say a big thank you to that. Yeah, especially our friend Ellie. Um, she can't be here with us here for this. Otherwise, we totally would have dragged her in. But she's mm-hmm. also one of the beta testers, and she's from the UK. So she's currently doing it as we speak. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, none of us are from Australia or the UK. Uh, we're just simply just talking about the story. Um, and otherwise, I would lo- we would have loved to give our thoughts on the gameplay aspect, but it will only be until the game releases where we can truly talk about it. And I'm sure Brisk will think of a way to. I'm assuming you could. If not, that's totally fine. But um, yeah, I'm I'm very excited to see where Missing Link goes. Really, just uh, I- I've been itching for another Kingdom Hearts mobile game for a while, and I I've been playing Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis from time to time, but. It's not the same like Union Cross. I I genuinely miss playing Union Cross. It's something I used to go and play after work. Mm-hmm. Um and when it shut down it made me sad. So it's um I, I can't wait to get back to the groove to the Kingdom Hearts mobile game vibe. I know most people aren't on board with the whole gotcha system. I don't blame anybody, but um I know just and and customizing my character to to my liking and being involved in the story again, like I used to in Union Cross, is going to be another fun trip to go to with who knows how long it'll go. Um, but I, whatever the case, it'll be worth losing a chunk of my battery for on my phone. <laughs> oh, I'm in definitely fact, getting I, a new phone for sure when that game comes out. Oh, yeah, no, I'm almost done. But, 
my car, I'm going to start uh, saving up for a new phone as well. Because mm-hmm. fo- I've got a phone from 2017. It will catch on fire if I try to run <laughs> Yeah, I, I actually did, did get a new phone a while back for just for Missing Link. And I got it the high, almost the highest gigs as I could. Like, I spent almost $1,000 on an iPhone 13 just to get as much gigs as possible so I can play this game. Mm-hmm. I can't guarantee if it'll help my battery, but sure as heck we'll have some space. And that's all that matters to me. <laughs> Yeah, my my iPhone XR is lagging on Pokemon Go, so I definitely oh. need to upgrade. I have never seen right, a phone right. lag as hard. I mean, I'm like, Pokemon Go is not that intensive, but mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's a sign it needs to go. But I'm literally waiting until the very end because for fingers crossed, nothing happens. But I don't want to wait like another two more years, and then if I get a new phone now, and then it gets like not it's outdated by whatever standards go down the road um or Mm -hmm. if they decide like hey guess what it's going to be a pc game and not a mobile game and i'm like great (laughs) i mean i probably should get a new phone either way but yeah i'm waiting until we get that release date and then i'm going straight to the store and being like one new phone please it is urgent i need it immediately yeah like we're still waiting yeah we're still waiting on that release date they they said in the then the trailer about half a year ago it's coming 2024 mm-hmm. but i don't trust it <laughs> yeah. oh but could you imagine so they did a event in california for union cross uh the dandelion meetup yeah that would be i've heard about that so cool if they did one for um for missing link like that some point down the road to announce because because i actually went to the the dandelion event and they were uh showing off that's where we found out about Classic Kingdom. They announced it at that event, and we also got to see like a little that trailer of Sora on his phone and being like, "Oh, cool, Classic Kingdom." It was like a very short clip. Um, mm. If they were to do that closer to KH four and do like an event, that would be so amazing. I hope they do that. That was really so much fun. Um, mm. Yeah, but that's my hope with all this new stuff with like Missing Link. We get a uh, Dandelion meetup round two which i guess it wouldn't be the data line meetup it would be whatever it would be the baroque Baroque, society the baroque society yeah Um, society meetup or something i don't know i'm sure i'm sure they'll come up with something but yeah it was Mm -hmm. it was cool it was really cool they like decorated the entire area to look like daybreak town you get some really good deals on square enix merch too Um, oh man but yeah what i get (laughs) But yeah, I mean, we get to definitely get to hang out and uh, be around so many other, you know, Kingdom Hearts friends as well. So that would be cool. Mm-hmm. I actually got to meet a couple of of when I when I had Union Cross at the time. I went over to visit my dad because he was kind enough to let me stay at his place so I can um, witness the a Kingdom Hearts Orchestra concert in in Texas in Dallas. Mm-hmm. And um, a couple of my friends from my party actually went there in person. I got to meet them and talk to them in person. Ooh. And yeah, they said I was the first person they met online in for, in person. So that's like, it's really cool. Like I even met like other people that attended the concert. Like there's even like a couple of guys in like organization codes and said they were like, they traveled like, like what, 12 hours on a bus just to get here. Oh, wow. So, uh, that's some dedication. It is dedication. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, I kind of, I kind of traveled for twelve hours. So that goes, and that includes like getting on a bus and going on a couple stops on by plane. And basically, I got to my dad's at midnight, basically. So it was like, I don't think it was twelve hours. It was like, oh, I think it was pretty sure over twelve hours uh, of travel. It was very long and tiring, but it was absolutely worth it because I got to get some. Cool merch. I got some. Um, I got a shirt from that place. I even got the conductor wands of Oblivion and Oathkeeper. Oh, I, I have didn't the know key they had those ones. I thought there was only the Kingdom key. Uh, there is the Kingdom key, but they also have Oathkeeper and Oblivion. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, and I think when I was there, the comp- the conductor that was doing the guy leading the music, I think he used Oblivion. In that, in that, and I think that concert specifically was to share music from Kingdom Hearts three, 
Um, I actually been to two Kingdom Hearts concerts. I've been to the one um, kind of, I went to one in Chicago. Um, and that was a really, really neat experience to see. Like, I was in the front row, too. I mean, the only downside is because there's also a large screen where, like, like images from Kingdom Hearts was show. So I just had to look up quite a few times. But I'm also closer to the orchestra, which is really cool. Um, so, like, hearing, say, Factor to the Heavens and... Um, what was the other song that I liked? Um, let me see. I forgot who... Fake Kingdom Hearts fan. I forgot the name of the song. Uh, give me I'll, a I'll be honest. There's times where I, people will reference songs, and I'm just like, what scene Fate was of the that? Unknown. What scene was that in? Because <laughs> I'll okay, know it by so, the scene. Oh, so like, there's three songs that you know that stood out was, um, Fate of the Unknown, Vector to the Heavens, and obviously, uh, the Other Promise. Those were the obviously the big ones that stood out and um just and the Kingdom Hearts 3 orchestra is like oh my goodness it's it's just as great <laughs> but yeah no I, I've been to the orchestra once before definitely if you haven't been to one definitely would recommend it yeah take do it just do mm -hmm. it I would love to go to those one one day they are just so cool and Numara also apparently like dropped lore during them thanks yeah cuz didn't he do it didn't he mention the like nominee Terra thing during one of the yeah. orchestras yeah that was during yeah. the yeah. orchestras <laughs> I remember because I was visiting my parents um, who live in the San Diego area and uh, I was just like dang I'm only just like a few hours away what the heck <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll be honest with you. I think that's exclusively in Japan. When I saw something like this, I think they had different songs played compared to what the little little book booklet thing has and has listed. Um, like I think there was like for example, there's actually the organization theme played in the orchestra, and it was not in the booklet that I bought. Mm. So I think the whole Terra nominate interaction was just a Japanese exclusive thing um and actually now that i th now that reminds me speaking of japanese exclusive we all remember second breath right where's the cd for second breath <laughs> where is it um uh i actually know where that cd is it's in the black box <laughs> oh that's true <laughs> that's what's in the box it's the it's the second breath cd everybody <laughs> that's a that's a whole yeah, I'm actually surprised they did not announce that yet. I mean, there was there was first breath, but I like I think I think first see first breath. I think it's just mostly like there wasn't much of a choir involved. It's just mostly like simple instrument, simple instruments like some violin, some some obviously piano and things like that, but not really much of choir involved in first breath. And I think second breath might might be no different, but. Uh, I w I'll never know because they did not release a CD yet. Um, <laughs> but but I think Second Breath kind of focuses on like Kingdom Hearts three and stuff. But I could be wrong. But but I want it so I can really be sure. <laughs> I want it. I agree with Swood. I think it's in the black box. I think that's what Nomura is hiding from us in the Master of Masters. <laughs> oh yeah, and I think I heard during the Second Breath thing, Nomura said something weird. He's like, guys, something happened. And left the stage. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> I think he was about to confirm something, but then I guess it didn't work out. I don't know. Maybe he didn't have time. And we don't know exactly what happened. So, even Shimamura doesn't know. It's canon. Whatever it was, it was canon. We gotta make sure to write that down. Everyone take a mental note of it. Make sure you <laughs> never forget. <sighs> but, on that note, guys... Thanks for hanging out. It's been a lot of fun. Again, mm -hmm. I'll uh, I'll rattle. I'll make sure to uh, give you guys, you know, your credits, your dues on, in the video. But everybody will know I was hanging out with the amazing Swood, Oath, Prime, and Eliza. But thanks, thanks a lot. This was a lot of fun um, for like a second episode to do something a little differently, especially since I really wanted to talk about these topics. And I was happy that you guys 
<laughs> also uh, wanted to talk about them as well and that we were able to get some insights, especially that, uh, that Incredibles one. That's honestly something that uh, I'm going to think about from here on out. Um, and come up with potential good ideas for a teen with a TV show or a movie or mini series. Right. Yeah. Disney, should... Disney Plus, hit us up. <laughs> we're we're open as consultants. We will we will 100% <laughs> be dedicated to the project. We know this series in and out. Hornship. I haven't moved on from Cat Axel. <laughs> He's still thinking about that, actually. Dude, I have been, too. I want that so badly. He could just be a, like an orange cat with a red hue. But then you could also have, like, a, a cat Roxas, and he could have his little wristband on, too. What was that? That would literally be the so. cutest thing ever. <laughs> Ellie looking in on this and being like, yes, 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 cat <laughs> yeah, I need I need all the Kingdom Hearts artists out there. Someone draw me. I'm sure it's probably out there. But someone draw me, Cat Axel. I need that so badly. There is Lion King Axel roaming around online, so that's mm -hmm. close enough. I mean, I mean, I would be happy with Lion Axel as well, and just have it like a big red spiky. It's almost like when Simba was a kid and he had that little like leave uh, uh, mane when he was singing that uh, I, I want to be king. That, but just Axel and his hair being all red and spiky, that would be amazing. Oh I my found, god. Uh, I have found fan art of uh, an Aristocat world version of that. <gasps> I will send it in oh, the chat. Really? Oh my god. I, mean, I had to have assumed that this existed, but oh my god, I'm so excited. I'm waiting, Swood. I'm waiting. I, 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 I literally I just opened up disc the other Discord and was like, let's go. <laughs> Okay, so I found a really cool version of Lion Axel as well, uh, unless someone caught that before I did, but uh, it looks very Axel. Oh wait, Final Fantasy Brother Bear. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I said that in a different channel. <laughs> oh, that kind of looks different? like the fox from, uh, what's it called? Oh. Like the fox and the hound. Fox and the hound. Oh my god, the fox and the hound world would be such a great one. Oh my god, that is a. I love Not that. Though. I love that. I think Ooh, I've seen that's, like that's also cool. like some lion Xehanorts as well, and um, mm -hmm. they they. Let me see if I. Oh, Out of all the lion that. characters, other than Sora, we had to get Pete. Uh, bro, get some more <laughs> characters in there. Lion Pete. Okay. Person. Yeah, I mean, I, I, mean I dig technically that. Technically, he's a he's a cat, so that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah, I can okay. see it now that I'm looking at it. Yeah, it does look. I I initially instantly went to the fox just because he has the same color scheme as the as uh, the the uh, what's his name Todd. Was it Copper mm -hmm. or Todd? In Fox of the I Hound. Mean, Todd is the fox. Todd yeah. is the fox. Okay. Okay. Well. On that note, thanks again. All this, oh, okay. That is, That's I good. like that a lot. That is amazing. Yeah. Dude, Z Z Zigbar as a lion needed to happen. Yes. Oh, why did we not get Lion King in Kingdom Hearts 3? I am, all right, before I go on a, <laughs> on a whole Lion King <laughs> rant, because Lion King is my favorite Disney movie, so if I could have Lion King show up in more things, I would be so happy. But <laughs> I'm going to end it there. Thanks again, everybody. Uh, goodbye. Thanks for inviting us. It was Thank quite you. fun. Yeah, Thanks no for having us. <laughs>